He was running away from her, but she was faster. He fell on the ground. She sliced his hand with a blade. She told him to not move in order to tell her what he, the human, was doing here. The guy started talking. His name is Shibata Kosuke. He said he liked to play survival games on his computer, but somehow he ended up in a forest and he couldn't explain how it happened. But the elf girl didn't believe his words. Then he looked at her face and said, Dark elf, beautiful. She kicked him hard for that. Not for the word beautiful, but for the word dark elf. She didn't like him calling her that. Kosuke yelled at her and called her savage. Well, she just smiled and snidely asked him what he was staring at right now. He was honest and said he was looking at her breasts. She liked his honesty and let him wake up. Then she asked him again what he was doing here, and he honestly answered he didn't know. And that was true. He woke up in this place and looked at the sky. There were two giant planets above him. Then the elven girl told him they are in Risu, Pensu continent, in the Omit wilderness border of the Black Forest. Let's take a look at the past. It was Kosuke's first day of survival. He realized he ended up in an unknown place. He had his house key, smartphone, and some wallet. He could take a taxi and go back home. Well, actually, he couldn't. It was another world. That's sad. He wished it would be just a game. But it was reality and he needed to think up something. He literally had no idea what to do. Then he calmed down and realized that it would be more important to build a safe shelter first. He luckily ended up in a dark, dense forest. If it was a game, he could just make a stilt shelter. Well, it doesn't matter! He took a stone and quickly made a stone knife, his first tool. Then he headed to the forest. Since it was reality, there were a lot of huge insects and bushes. How disgusting. Then Kosuke found a tree that looked nice for his safe shelter. He had to do everything fast until the sun set. He got some materials. It wouldn't be possible to survive without a fire, so Kosuke decided to make a bow drill fire starter. It was hard for the first time, but after some attempts, he finally did that. A campfire. Kosuke realized he felt hungry. He was really angry that he didn't have anything in this world. He just ended up here without any special abilities. What a stupid situation. But Kosuke couldn't go hunting at night. He needed to sleep well now. If it was a game, he could just press the E button and summon the craft menu. And once Kosuke thought about it, he suddenly summoned the craft menu. What? Then he realized he can summon or disable it just by thinking about pressing the E button. It was for real. Then he thought about what would happen by using the tab key. And once he thought about that, he summoned an inventory. He could also see his status. Then he realized he was actually in a survival game. What luck! He could easily make anything he needed just by using the craft menu. Then he started thinking about what he needed to make right now, and how would it work? He took a stone and a stick, and it worked! He could create anything! After some time, he made all the weapons and instruments he needed. Well, some of them he couldn't use normally since he had no required skills, but it was possible to use at least. And the inventory thing is really cool. Kosuke could put everything he wanted and not feel its weight. And it was easy to pull out any item from there. Well, now it was time to sleep well. It would be dangerous to go somewhere at nighttime. The hunger was really annoying. The next day, Kosuke was fooling around. He imagined he was streaming with a wooden camera. But then he remembered it was reality and all the magic suddenly disappeared. He needed to find some food and water. If Kosuke starts thinking about pressing move buttons, he could move to any side by only his wish. What the hell? Laws of inertia literally went away. And he also could jump by using the space key. Then he looked forward and saw water. He headed right there. There was a rock on his way. Kosuke tried to do a double jump. He jumped by himself and then used the space key. It worked. Then he landed successfully on the ground. But when he looked forward, he saw his first enemy. Lizard. That wasn't good at all. So bad. In the next moment, he rushed away from there and the lizard started chasing him too. Kosuke realized he could use the sprint key, but the lizard was too fast and Kosuke decided to take the fight. He took his spear and threw it into the lizard, but he missed. What unluck, there was a second one, but the lizard suddenly jumped at Kosuke and he fell on the ground. Kosuke didn't understand what happened, his weapon broke, but then he looked at the lizard and realized he defeated him. To make sure the animal died, he took the stone axe and struck him hard some more times. He opened the window and saw all the loot he could get from the animal's corpse. After Kosuke took all the items into his inventory, the lizard's corpse disappeared. Well, it was time to go back to his shelter. Kosuke put water into the bottle. He did it 50 times. It might be 50 liters of water. Now he needed to boil this water to sterilize it. When he came back, he saw there was a craft recipe of safe water by using the campfire. He also wanted to grill the meat to make it tasty. Kosuke noticed that the craft icon of the safe water was looking different. It was actually a plastic bottle. How could it be possible? But well, he didn't care. He drank a lot. It was really great water. The meat also has been cooked. Kosuke was crying from happiness. It had the chicken meat's taste. It's his first meal here.
After the dinner, he decided to do some more work. First, he needed to create a stone shovel. After that, he started digging around his base. It wasn't hard to do since this world was working like the game. If he digs a little, it digs the entire block. Very easy. He finished it quickly. He got some rich soil and clay. It was possible to craft some more blocks by using it. There also was a furnace which would be helpful in processing metal. It was almost night. Kosuke quickly made a hammock and went to sleep. And when he fell asleep, that elf girl noticed him. She couldn't get past the human. She listened to his story and this time she believed him. Then the elf girl summoned some spirits and they surrounded Kosuke. First he got scared but when he saw they healed the wound on his hand he was surprised. It felt really pleasant. She said that the spirit of life actually was fond of him. Kosuke thought he might be able to use magic but the elf girl broke all his dreams since she didn't feel any magic aura surrounding him. Then she told him to follow her. She said there might appear other hostile creatures. Kosuke agreed it wouldn't end well and he gladly came with her. Then he suddenly realized he still didn't know her name. She turned and realized she actually forgot to say that. Her name is Sylphie. She is one of the guardians of the Black Forest. She is also known as the Witch of the Dark Forest. Sylphie was too fast for Kosuke. He was breathing hard. She told him to not cry and be the man, and they were almost at the right place. Sylphie pointed forward and Kosuke saw a village. It was pretty large. Kosuke thought that the villagers would be happy to meet him. But Sylphie suddenly gave him a collar and told to wear it. It looked interesting. But why should he wear it? Sylphie said it will save his life, and she didn't lie. When they came to the village, Kosuke realized it was literally opposite to his dreams. All the beasts wanted to kill him. They were really mad to see a human. Kosuke didn't get what was happening. Sylphie shouted out to everyone to go out of their way. She said she needed to talk with guardians and told Kosuke to wait here. He was worried if he would be safe. Then an elf guy came here and told Kosuke to follow him to not gather the attention of the crowd that much. Kosuke didn't mind. They came to a quiet place. Then the elf threw him on the ground. Kosuke realized he was betrayed by him. Kosuke looked back and saw two oni that were going to smash him. And other villagers gathered here too. They surrounded Kosuke with weapons. He didn't know what to do. It was such a terrible situation. Then someone shouted out to get out of here and the cloud of dust covered the site. When it dissolved, they saw Sylphie. She was holding Kosuke by the collar. He couldn't breathe normally. She told everyone he is her own slave and no one is able to make him suffer except her. They understood her clearly and walked away. Kosuke realized why she told him to wear this collar, but he actually didn't like that she kept holding him like a dog. Sylphie said that every dog should be chained with a collar. Kosuke didn't like her jokes. He also wanted to know why those beasts wanted to kill him. Sylphie told him a story. There is a conflict between humans and other races. In the kingdom, subhumans aren't able to live normal life since the kingdom didn't count them as humans. So, the refugees from the kingdom live in this village. It's way better to live far away from humans. That's why they were that hostile to him. Kosuke looked forward and saw large flying plantations. Sylphie said they grow crops by using magic. It might be even better than in Japan. Sylphie told him to continue following her. They finally came to Sylphie's place. Kosuke was amazed by how beautiful it was. When Kosuke entered the house, he started sniffing. It smelled really good, but Sylphie said she didn't burn incense and it was just always like that. Well, Kosuke wanted to know what was the reason for capturing him. Sylphie said she did it just for fun, but Kosuke didn't believe her words. Then she said he was looking interesting for her. There was a legend of the god Ador that sometimes summons humans to their world. Sylphie hoped Kosuke was one of those humans and it meant he could have some interesting powers. She asked him what kind of power he has, but Kosuke didn't want to show all the aces that fast. But Sylphie really wanted him to answer, and she used all her charisma to force him to talk. Kosuke couldn't keep his silence and started talking. He showed her his inventory and what he can do with it. She was surprised he made all these items by himself. Sylphie wanted to know more. Kosuke regretted telling her that much. She also noticed raw lizard meat. Kosuke told how he got it. The lizard's corpse disappeared and all the loot came to his inventory. He thought about meat and realized he was hungry. Sylphie told him to make some food. He was her servant so he should cook for her too. Kosuke asked her to help with that, and she didn't mind. It was not bad for his first cook. Kosuke would say it was really tasty, but he also needed to sleep somewhere. The floor won't be a good place for that. Sylphie smiled and offered to sleep together. Kosuke got really shy, but she was persistent. Kosuke didn't actually know what to do. This world's social rules may be different from his one. But Sylphie calmed him down. She said all he needs is just a bit of curiosity. Then Kosuke realized there was nothing that would stop him. He woke up and picked Sylphie up. She blushed hard. Kosuke carried her to the bedroom. Sylphie said it will be her first time. Kosuke actually would have love experience in this world for the first time too. She asked him to be gentle. 
The next day, Kosuke felt strange. Everything was like a blur. He asked Silfi if she felt good. She answered it was like she lost something important. Kosuke cooked some food and offered it to her. But she was mad at him because he did that yesterday to her. Her hits were painful. She told him they were going hunting today. The lunch was actually looking great. Silfi chained Kosuke again. He still couldn't get used to it. Everyone was staring at them, but they didn't try to do anything. Were they afraid of Silfi? Then Kosuke noticed that elf guy that tried to kill him yesterday. His name is Nate. Silfi told Kosuke to not worry about him. Anyway, he couldn't do anything to him because of her. There were some wooden materials. Kosuke asked Silfi what they were building. She said it will be the house especially for refugees. There were a lot of refugees and they needed to live somewhere. Ever since the Holy Kingdom took over, the refugees lost everything and their only way was to leave the kingdom. Kosuke said everyone who loses the conflict faces fate like this, but he actually understood what she was thinking about. Silfi might want to help the kingdom of Vernard gain its freedom back. He didn't mind helping her with that since he had a really good skill. He could create any weapon quickly. Well, it was time to hunt. And finally, Kosuke could take off the chain since they weren't in the village right now. Silfi told him to be quiet. He told her to not worry about that and demonstrated how quiet he can be. Silfi got scared of his abilities. It looked not normal at all. He also asked her if he could try to cut that wood. Silfi said it would take too much time to make it useful, but Kosuke wanted to show something. He opened the inventory and took the stone axe. First, Silfi thought he was doing something strange, but then the tree suddenly fell down. What the hell was that? She had no words to say. The tree he cut it just now was absolutely clear from all the branches and leaves. Moreover, the tree was looking way straighter than it actually was before. Silfi thought she was going crazy. Then he reached out his hand and opened the inventory. All the items got immediately sorted there. Kosuke asked Silfi if he could cut some more trees. She told him to not cut anything but those she will point at. After some time, Kosuke had 50 tree logs. That was enough. Well, now it was time to find some ores. They headed to the mountains. After some time of walking, they suddenly stopped. Kosuke said he heard something strange, but Silfi told him he was going crazy and they continued walking. But then she stopped again. There was an unknown spider-like beast. It was standing in their way. It was a really large spider. Kosuke realized if he met this spider when he was alone, he could be dead already. Silfi told Kosuke to watch the spider's abdomen. He wanted to say something, but he didn't see Silfi. She attacked the spider. She was really fast. Then Kosuke noticed the spider's sting. It was ready to attack. Kosuke decided to do something and tried to use the bow like it was the game. And it worked. The arrow got right into the spider's body. Silfi didn't lose any time and jumped at the spider. She stabbed his head easily. Then she jumped back and landed on the ground successfully. Kosuke was astonished. Silfi looked at the spider. They killed this creature. Kosuke asked if this thing was edible. She said it's absolutely not, but its poison gland and abdomen is worth a bit. Then she added he can actually cook the spider's legs. Its meat might be good for the bow. Silfi told Kosuke to use his inventory and bring the beast to the village. Then he came closer and reached his hand out. The spider's corpse suddenly disappeared. He looked into his inventory. This beast is called a gizma. Silfi was very surprised to know this beast was walking in the forest since it must live in Omit Wilds. She realized that the bad things she was thinking about were becoming real. She told Kosuke that a lot of refugees were killed by these monsters. That was terrible. She said that they didn't see any new refugees for the last two years. It meant these monsters were just killing them. Sipli told Kosuke to go back since they might meet more gizmas or other dangerous beasts. He realized he could easily meet them while he had been gathering the stones when he was alone. It seemed that he got really lucky. Kosuke found a lot of resources. The temperature was cold, but never mind, Kosuke was determined to make a workbench today. He got a lot of magnetic sand and it was time to create a furnace. After that, Kosuke needed to create the materials for creating a workbench. It was just like in the game, but still a bit hard. He needed wood, nails, vice, and toolbox. For creating the vice, he needed 20 pieces of steel and 10 mechanical parts. The easiest thing was that he didn't even need to know how to make it. He just needed the materials and that's all. He was wondering where Silfi was right now. She said she went to watch the perimeter but still didn't come back. Well, he finally made the vice. It was the last material he needed for creating the workbench. Nice! It was way easier and faster than he thought. He immediately put it right here. Looks nice! He opened the menu and was really surprised by how much stuff he was able to create now. And there were also new types of weapons. A crossbow, for example. He looked at the crossbow craft recipe. He needed two twigs, two wooden sticks, mechanical details, and 20 fibers. But he could actually make a better version of it, but he needed to craft a steel plate spring. But how to make it? He opened the recipe and there appeared more windows. 
To create the spring, he needed to upgrade his furnace at first. And to upgrade his furnace, he needed to upgrade his workbench. That was too hard to do right now. Then, Kosuke noticed a new section there. He opened it and saw his level and stats. Not bad. There you can see all the stats Kosuke can upgrade. Well, he couldn't decide what to upgrade first, so he decided to do it later. There also was an achievements menu. There were a lot of locked achievements, but some of them were already complete. First workbench. After completing this achievement, he was allowed to see his status, skills, and achievements in the menu. So every achievement was giving him something. Then he saw he completed the achievement First Mate. Just because he had an act of love with Sylphie? What the hell? And it actually wasn't his first time, but was there something else? An achievement technician. Because he made Sylphie feel great that night. What the hell are these achievements? That was totally dumb. Kosuke didn't notice Sylphie came back. He got scared. He apologized for letting his guard down. She also came here with the rabbit. She told him to use his inventory. Sylphie praised him for his work. She was surprised to see the shovel made of steel. There also was a steel pickaxe. Kosuke struck the stone a few times and it disappeared. He gave her a little piece of iron ore. He didn't know why it was working in that strange way, but if it works, then doesn't matter. She asked him if he wasn't a mage for sure, but Kosuke really had no idea what kind of power he had. It wasn't magic at all. Sylphie told Kosuke she will protect him from danger. He felt shy because of her words. Then Kosuke put a sandwich on the table. It was still warm and Sylphie was wondering if the time in the inventory just stops. His power was against all the physics laws. Sylphie told Kosuke they needed to come back to the village today. There was something she wanted to talk about with the elders. Hold him better! An elf guard was yelling at Sylphie. He didn't want to let her and the human meet the elders, but she just ignored him. Then the guard took her shoulder and was going to say something, but in the next moment he immediately got a strike in the face. And that's what happens to those who make Sylphie angry. They entered the house. There was a big hall room. In the center of the room were sitting the elders. They were surprised to see Sylphie, since she didn't like their company at all. Sylphie said she came here with important news. They immediately asked about Kosuke. He was human, so it was obvious that they were interested in him. The elder said she didn't feel any magic around him. Wasn't he a Marabito? A guy from another world? And she guessed right. Well, it wasn't the main thing Sylphie wanted to talk about. She said about Gizmas appeared in the dark forest. It was a serious problem. The elders started talking with each other about that. All the problems were because of refugees, and the elves actually had no reasons to help them. Then the elder asked Sylphie about Kosuke. Didn't she want to make him her own servant? And moreover, they knew she already had mingled with him on the first night. Sylphie blushed hard. How did they figure that out? Well, the elder elf said that her magic aura just changed a bit. It happens to every woman who accepts a man. Sylphie was going to sink into the floor. The elder said she was the only royal bloodline virgin girl. That information surprised Kosuke. Well, it wasn't time for jokes. The elder elf asked Sylphie seriously, Who is this guy? Sylphie answered that she didn't know anything about him but that he appeared from nowhere in the forest and that he has some interesting skills. The elder elf didn't feel like she could trust her words. She was going to take Kosuke into their custody but Sylphie refused to let them do that and hugged him hard. And it seemed that he didn't mind at all. Well, the elder elf realized they're looking good together so she decided to watch what would happen next. But despite being a Marabito, he was also a human. It meant it would be hard for villagers to accept him. Kosuke needed to show them his best and then the villagers would accept him. Sylphie understood the elder elf's words. They wanted to see his powers in work so everything was on him. Then Sylphie told Kosuke it was time to go and they were going to leave. Then the elder elf asked Kosuke his name. He told her his name. Shibata Kosuke. The elder elf asked him to take care of Sylphie. He said everything will be okay and they left the house. After they left the house, Kosuke asked Sylphie if she felt okay. She looked a bit nervous and Kosuke just wanted to lighten the mood. She said she was just thinking about what they need to do now. Sylphie said that if they will be able to save the refugees with Kosuke's powers, then he will be accepted by the villagers. Kosuke asked if they needed some help with building the walls. Sylphie said they will end building it at best in six months. Kosuke got a thought. He said he can help with that. First, he started making the items he needed. He also needed to create some bricks. Kosuke didn't show all his powers to Sylphie, so it was time to demonstrate something. He swung his arms and there appeared a block of wood. And then he was walking back and placing the blocks like it was the game. Sylphie had no words to say. He just built the wall in a few seconds. What the hell? Kosuke really surprised Sylphie by his trick. The wall he built was made of real wood. It wasn't magic. Then Kosuke said they actually need to use bricks or stone material for the walls. And he started placing it fast. It actually was looking like some kind of magic. No, it was just something strange. He was proud of his superpowers, but Sylphie told him to shut up. She touched the wall and realized it was made of real bricks. Then Kosuke said he made a new weapon, so he wanted to test it out right now. It was a simple crossbow. 
Sylphie thought it was some kind of bow and she guessed right. Kosuke said it's easy to use. He gave it to Sylphie and offered to make a shot. She immediately realized it was way easier to aim than the bow. And finally, shot. Very well. Kosuke said it's a really good thing for those who aren't able to use a simple bow. It meant they could give these long-range weapons to all the refugees. Well, the crossbow wasn't strong enough to pierce the gizma's skin. Then Kosuke gave her an upgraded version of this weapon. She looked at it and realized it would be way stronger. She asked Kosuke to put the gizma's body here. She wanted to test it against the real enemy. Kosuke put the gizma's body on the ground. Sylphie aimed and shot. The projectile pierced the gizma's skin easily. It's a really strong weapon. Then Kosuke asked Sylphie if he could build a workshop here in the backyard. She didn't mind and told him he could build anything he wanted. Kosuke decided to make a simple square building. Then he took a wooden block and started the building process. First he built the floor. Now it was time to build the walls. Well, it was still looking crazy. Sylphie couldn't get used to his abilities. And the last thing he needed to make were the windows. And finally, his workshop was finished. Sylphie was shocked he built the entire house in just 30 minutes. It was a bit strange inside, but Kosuke felt great. It was better than nothing. He wanted to talk about building the walls tomorrow, but Sylphie put the finger on his mouth and said it's time for dinner. She was going to cook it by herself. Even if Sylphie thought Kosuke was her slave, she also was his wife. And every good wife should cook for her man. Sylphie offered him to come to her place. It was happening really fast. Kosuke didn't get what was happening but followed her. Kosuke and Sylphie had a good dinner. Kosuke told her about his plans. He wanted to build the brick wall around the village so he wanted to get as much clay as possible. They also needed to make a lot of crossbows. It's really important for refugees' safety. Sylphie asked Kosuke if they could replace the animal's bones with the gizma shell. Kosuke said it's a good idea. Sylphie smiled. Kosuke felt embarrassed. She was a really cute girl and he was wondering why she was so kind to him. She was way different now from the moment they met each other for the first time. Then Kosuke asked Sylphie about her past. It made her blush. Was it that interesting for him? Sylphie put her head on Kosuke's shoulder and said she is the heiress of the royal family. Kosuke was wondering why the princess was walking living in the dark forest alone. Sylphie said it's the royal family tradition. But the Holy Kingdom captured her country and she lost her family. That's why she was so determined to protect everyone in this village. And then Kosuke asked her if she was using him for her own purposes. The human that came from another world and has powerful abilities. Kosuke also guessed it was the reason she had an act of love with him. And Sylphie said it was true. But Kosuke said it's okay. He didn't care about that much and was happy to help her. He said he will be there until he has repaid her for all of the things she did for him. Sylphie was really surprised to hear that answer. The honest answer from Kosuke. She hugged him. She was happy to be with him. They kissed each other. It was a long, lovely night. Tomorrow, Sylphie felt embarrassed. They were doing a lot of bad things that night and she wanted Kosuke to forget about this. He made some jokes about her, but it seems that she wasn't in a fun mood now. Kosuke was sent to the kitchen to cook breakfast. They came to the village's main storage. There were some goods they needed to transport. Eight barrels of wine, eight bags of flour, and four cans of salt. Kosuke took it into his inventory. After that, they headed to the refugees' camp to talk with their leaders. They wanted to know what were the results of their talk with the elders. When refugees saw Kosuke for the first time, they were really scared. They wanted his death. There was a minotaur named Danon. When he saw Sylphie, he bowed down. He was addressing her as Your Majesty, and Sylphie didn't like it at all. Well, she told him to just tell the leaders of the refugees that she arrived here. Danon immediately started carrying out the order. Before he walked away, he glanced at Kosuke with evil. That was scareful. Kosuke asked her why he was so hostile, and she told him his story. Humans raped and killed his wife, and after that, he lost both of his children in the Omit wilderness. That was sad. Kosuke asked Sylphie what was the reason to bring him here then, and she said it just would be a nice chance to show the refugees that he isn't bad. All Kosuke needed was to just follow her orders. Sylphie said she won't abandon him, and Kosuke said the same. Sylphie was happy to hear that. Then Sylphie told everyone she brought a lot of food and wood here. Then Kosuke reached out his hands, and there appeared the gizma's meat. Everyone was shocked. It appeared literally from nowhere. Then Sylphie said it was time to cook. First, they wanted to feed kids. When Danon came back, he didn't understand what was happening. He told Sylphie the leaders were waiting for them. Sylphie and Kosuke went to meet them. They entered the tent. The leaders asked them how they may help. Sylphie told them it was about the problem with gizmas. The leaders told them what they heard from the elders. They could make a choice to run away to the forest or to take the fight here. It was good. Then Sylphie introduced Kosuke to them. He was the guy that could help them with building the wall and with weapons. She also said he was the one who took her virginity. Well, no one expected to hear that and even Kosuke was confused. 
No one could believe her words. That was scandalous. Kosuke is a human. What the hell? Silphy shouted out to everyone to calm down. She was going to explain everything. She told them he came from another world, and she didn't want to just tell them about his abilities. Better would be to let Kosuke introduce himself. But Danan and others still felt confused and didn't trust Kosuke. That was obvious, and Silphy knew they wouldn't believe it until they had seen it with their own eyes. Then Silphy told Kosuke to tell them everything. It was really important. And he told them his story. It was hard, but they believed his words. Danan told Kosuke if Kosuke will harm her majesty, then he will stab Kosuke's heart with his horns. Kosuke understood him clearly. Then Danan offered everyone to introduce themselves, too. Danan was first. He was a Marinard Imperial Guard, the Vice Commander of the Knights. Then the Sheep Girl introduced herself. Her name is Melty. She was the Internal Affairs Minister for the Marinard Kingdom. Kosuke was surprised to see a Sheep Girl there. He liked her from the first glance. And of course, she noticed what he was staring at right now. The Cyclops Girl introduced herself as Era. She was the Marinard Kingdom's court mage. And when Kosuke looked into her eye, she tried to hide it. Well, she was a shy girl. The wolf girl was named Kubi. She had no status or special abilities like them, but she was pretty confident in herself. The leaders and Kosuke finally found a common ground. It was time to talk about more important things, about Kosuke's abilities. Melty asked him to clarify what kind of things he can make. So, Silphie offered them to go outside and see everything with their own eyes. Then a refugee entered the tent and asked about the food. The leaders that were in charge of all food were going to solve the problem. Silphie said to not wait for them. They still had a lot of things to do. They came to the place where Kosuke had already placed some bricks. Silphie smiled and told them to just watch the show. Kosuke asked if he could just break it all. Silphie didn't mind, then he took his pickaxe. A few touches and the block of bricks just disappeared. There are no words to describe their shock at that moment. He was just slightly swinging the pickaxe and nothing else. What the hell? The territory was cleared from the bricks. Now it was time to build the wall. The leaders were ready to see what would happen next. Then Kosuke started walking back and swinging his hands. The bricks were appearing from nowhere, and there was zero magic. Kosuke told them to touch this wall to check if it's not an illusion or something else. Then Kubi and Danan came closer and started hitting it, but it was too hard to break. Impossible! They built the wall just in a few seconds instead of two weeks. Ira couldn't believe he was just doing this with no cost. Impossible! It was trick! She didn't want to believe her own eyes. Kosuke said he didn't know about his abilities. It was just working and that's all, but Eira wanted to know more. Silphie told Kosuke to explain everything to her or she won't calm down, and Kosuke showed her more. She couldn't believe it was working like that, but she was holding a plastic bottle right now, and it appeared from nowhere. Was he cheating by using this so-called inventory? Kosuke told Era everything he could, but it was still impossible to explain why it was working in that way. But Melty was happy to know that Kosuke had such cool powers. It might be nice for cooking food. And then Melty and Era caught Kosuke. They were going to test if it's for real. It seemed that Kosuke and others were getting along. That was nice. After an hour, Kosuke felt really tired. They forced him to work hard. There was his lunch, Gizma's meat. It had a taste of chewy garlic shrimp. It was his first time eating an insect. In his country, people weren't eating such strange food. But their world was so different that they even had no monsters. Aira was shocked. How could it be possible? Monsters should be everywhere where magic is. And she was surprised even more when Kosuke told her that his world has no magic. What a strange guy. But she liked him. Silphie came here and noticed Kosuke was spending a lot of time with Era today. She was cute when getting jealous. He told her that he will never cheat on her. And since he said it too loudly, he got a hit in the stomach. They were getting along very well. Then Kubi asked Silphie what they needed to do next. Silphie said it was time to continue building the wall. Danan will show where he can find clay. They also had fuel, so there shouldn't be any problem. However, they had no wood at the moment. Then Silphie smiled and told them that Kosuke will solve this problem easily. The first tree fell on the ground, and for another time the leaders got shocked by Kosuke's powers. That was funny. He didn't even put any effort. Besides, the wood was straight, long, and ready for use. It was way more absurd than that trick with water. Ira said that Melty will be happy to know about Kosuke's ability. It made Kosuke feel worried. Didn't they just want to cut all the dark forest? He asked them to not tell Melty about that. Then Silphie told Aira and Kubi to go get some clay. But Aira asked Silphie to let her watch Kosuke for some more time. She didn't mind and let her stand with them. Kubi immediately started carrying the order and jumped high. What a strong girl. While well, Silphie was going to mark all the trees they needed to cut, it was sunset. They did a lot of work today. 
Ira realized that Kosuke's instruments and items had no magic powers, but it starts working in that crazy way only when Kosuke uses it. Absurd. Ira was holding the axe. It was really sharp. What an interesting tool. Kosuke was a bit scared by her, but she actually wasn't going to cut him in parts. Well, at least while he is alive, that sounded creepy. Kosuke felt really tired. Sylphie praised him for his work today. He did a lot. Sylphie asked what he was holding. It was bread he got from a refugee. He was glad to know he started getting along with refugees. Sylphie was glad to hear that too. She also praised him for the work he did with flour milling. He still couldn't forget this hell, so he asked Sylphie to not remind him about that. Sylphie asked Kosuke if he would try to find a common ground with them. Well, he wasn't sure. But everything was looking good and it seemed that the only problem might be Danan. He would be the most difficult person of them all. But Kosuke felt like he could get along with him too. But Sylphie wasn't sure about the crossbows. She said it won't end well if someone bad will get this weapon. It might end badly if they would give this weapon to everyone. Well, Kosuke offered her to give the crossbows to only persons they trust. Sylphie said it's a good idea. They came to Kosuke's workshop. It finally was the time to prepare everything for tomorrow. He placed some furnaces and put all the materials there. Everything was working by itself. That's very easy. Kosuke was happy to have such cool powers. He told Sylphie that they can upgrade the furnace. She said it would be nice. Then Kosuke clicked on the upgrade icon and the bright light suddenly filled the room. When it dissolved, they saw an upgraded furnace, anvil, and sharpening stone. Great! Well, it actually broke his wall for some reason. It seems that the new furnace needed a bit more space. Now it was time to see what this new furnace can do. Well, Kosuke expected that. Now he could upgrade the crossbow and the workbench. Moreover, he could start creating better armor and weapons. Sylphie offered Kosuke to make a weapon for Danan. There were some variants. He could create a halberd and a battle axe, but a bit different from what he was imagining, and then he finally got an idea. Bardish. But it appeared only when Kosuke thought about it. Another interesting thing about his powers, moreover, he also could repair things like armor or weapons. Sylphie instantly got an idea. She told Kosuke to follow her. They came to the little warehouse. There were the spoils of war. It was looking pretty old, and it seemed that this blood couldn't be removed. Kosuke opened his inventory. He was going to transport it all there. Everything was all right until Kosuke noticed some items were cursed. It scared him a bit. Wasn't it dangerous to hold cursed items? Sylphie said there is a way to remove the curse by using fire. They came back to Kosuke's workshop. He was going to repair all the equipment. Well, some of it was cursed, so he was still worrying about that. Then Kosuke realized that the weapon for Danan was already done. It was Bardish, a kind of battle axe, huge and heavy. He gave it to Sylphie. Even for her, it was a bit hard to move with. He told Sylphie there's a blade that would fit her very well. Sylphie came closer to him and asked to make it especially for her. He was glad to help her, but he didn't understand her hint. Then she straightly offered him to get some fun in bed tonight. Kosuke was glad to accept her wish, and he said he would let her do what she wanted. And these words changed the situation not in Kosuke's favor. The next day, Kosuke felt tired. This night was too crazy for him. Sylphie wanted to repeat it again today. When they came to the wall's place, they saw there was a lot of clay. Sylphie told Kosuke to bring all the weapons they repaired yesterday. Swords and shields dropped on the ground from his inventory. Then Danan wanted to see his weapon. Kosuke gave him his bardish. When Danan took it, he immediately realized it fits great for him. Would be nice to slice some gizmas with this axe. A really great weapon. Danan was wondering if it was made by Kosuke's powers. Sylphie said it's true. And she smiled, since Danan still didn't know about other Kosuke's abilities. Then Kosuke told everyone he was going to build up the blacksmithing facility here. He swung his hands and in the next moment there appeared a furnace with the anvil and the sharpening stone. After that, he placed more simple furnaces like it's just a wall. Everyone felt shocked. Ira was staring at him with jealousy. She came closer. She couldn't believe it was working like that. She was going crazy so Kubi caught her. While the furnaces were working, Kosuke decided to repair some cursed swords. They also needed to collect all this clay. Kosuke took his shovel and started working. Aira was watching him closely. She still wanted to figure out how it works. It isn't magic, but then what is it? Then Kosuke looked to the side and saw Melty. She was looking at Kosuke friendly. His sight fell on this thing she brought here. Well, he tried to ignore it this time. He didn't want to do the same work he did yesterday. Then Kosuke finished collecting the clay. He needed to create blocks of bricks. Then he swung his hands and there appeared a workbench. He was going to create an upgraded workbench. Ira came closer and focused all her attention to see what would happen next. Kosuke warned her it might be a bit bright, but she wanted to see everything. Then Kosuke pressed the button and the bright light blinded them. Melty asked what that was. Kosuke explained to her it was a process of upgrading. 
In the end, he got an upgraded version of the workbench. It was made of steel. Then Era said she saw something. It was a glimpse of the truth, and it reminded her of the holy magic used by priests. They got silent, and then Kosuke played along with her by saying it's true. Well, it was a joke. He just assumed he could be summoned by an unknown creature, and it granted him these abilities. There was silence. Ira believed his words. She was staying in this pose, holding her head until lunchtime came. Today they had some burgers for lunch. It looks tasty. Sylphie asked Kosuke if he was going to continue building the wall later today. He said that they made enough brick blocks so it would be nice to finish the job. Aira addressed Sylphie. She told her that she got an idea how to prove the fact that Kosuke came here from another world. It was interesting. Aira pointed at his slave collar. If he will be able to take it off without someone's help, then he is a true Marabito. Everyone got her idea. Then if he tries to remove it, then he dies. It scared Kosuke, so he started yelling at them to explain everything to him. Ira said this magic collar should lock his magic power and allow his owner to control Kosuke's body. Well, since Kosuke had zero magic powers, it meant this collar wasn't working at all. It was kinda interesting. Then Sylphie was going to test it out and she ordered him to take off all his clothes, but he actually was going to take the collar off first. Melty asked him if he would be able to take it off by himself. Then Kosuke put his hands on the collar and suddenly realized that Sylphie was thinking she could command him all this time. Then it meant their bed games were... Kosuke immediately got hit in the face for these thoughts. Melty asked Kosuke how much time building the wall might take. He said it might be around two or three hours. Then Sylphie woke up and said that right after Kosuke is done with the wall, they will hold a demonstration. Kosuke headed to the furnaces to take the bricks. Then Danan addressed him. He wanted to know why he didn't do anything bad to the princess if the collar wasn't working all this time. Kosuke just said there were no reasons to do that. Moreover, she saved his life. His words surprised Danan. But he believed him because Kosuke was an honest person. Kosuke asked if there was someone who could help him with confirming the range of the wall. Danan took a step towards him. Sylphie just smiled. Danan was glad to accompany him. They headed to the village entrance. Sylphie, Melty, Era, and Kubi were glad to see that Danan and Kosuke finally got along. After some time, Kosuke finished the wall. The last thing was to set up the gates, and well done. He finished building the wall around the village. Danan was very surprised that Kosuke did all his work that quickly. He did such a great job, very nice. But Kosuke had doubts about the height of the wall. He thought Gizmas can just jump like the insects in his world. Their jump was really high. Danan just calmed him down. Gizma can't jump that high. Their legs are used to jump straight forward. He also added that Gizmas usually gather into groups and attack from an ambush. Silphy was waiting for them. Danan and Kosuke finally finished the job. A large crowd gathered near the wall to listen to what Silphy wanted to say. And elf villagers were here too. There was silence. Then, Silphy started her speech. They finished building the wall with their help very quickly. She said there were no reasons to care if these walls would get broken by gizmas. The barrier was really hard. And all thanks to Kosuke, a human that came here from another world. Silphy said that Kosuke has no magic power at all. Even insects have a little amount of magic power, but Kosuke had literally zero. Ira could say it's true, but Silphy also wanted to show them the real proof. She pointed at Kosuke's collar. It was a slave collar, so if he has magic powers, then this collar won't let him do a single move without the master's command. But Kosuke just put his hands on the collar, and to everyone's surprise, he easily took it off. No way. But it was true. She might stop at that moment. But to convince everyone, and to prove the fact this collar wasn't fake, she offered them to test it out. A few brave monsters took a step forward. First was the cat girl. Sylphie put the collar on her neck and ordered to fell to her knees. The cat girl couldn't fight back the order. Then the lizard put the collar on another monster girl. When she tried to take it off, she started suffocating hard. So the collar wasn't fake, and it was time to test it out on Kosuke again. They were glad to do that. The cat girl put the collar on him and gave him an order to fall to his knees, but Kosuke just refused. She tried a few more times, but it wasn't working at all. And then he just took it off his neck without any effort. Then Sylphie hugged him. It seems that she was the only person he obeyed. When everyone saw it with their own eyes, Sylphie said what they wanted to hear. Yes, Kosuke is a human, but he came here with only good intentions. After her words, the monsters started applauding them a lot. Melty was clapping too. Kosuke was a bit scared the monsters were that intense. Sylphie was glad to know everyone agreed with her. Then she ended her speech. Kosuke realized they still had a lot of work to do. Sylphie and others gathered to discuss their next plan. They needed to make a plan against the Gizma. Here also were some new faces. The cat girl introduced herself as Jaghira. She was a scout in the royal army. Pilna the harpy was also from the same squad. The dog named Warg was the captain of the guards in Tanto City. There also was a bear girl named Gerda.
she was from the heavy infantry of the Marinard Royal Army. Kosuke was surprised that these girls were soldiers. Well, in this world, male and female beastmen have the same strength. Then Silphy told Kosuke to show them the weapons, and Kosuke put a bunch of crossbows on the table. Everyone got interested in what that was. They never saw such an interesting weapon. Silphy told Kosuke to show how it works. He took a step forward and put the steel chest plate on the ground. He showed how to load the crossbow. It wasn't hard. Then, when everything was prepared, he aimed and shot. The arrow pierced the chest plate easily, the long-range weapon that wasn't hard to use. Nice. Then Kosuke offered to try it out. Jaghira loaded the crossbow. She immediately realized this weapon fits her great. Era was interested in the mechanism of this weapon. This weapon might be really hard to make without Kosuke's powers, but they can try to look at this mechanism better and try to create something like that by themselves. Gerda couldn't use the crossbow since she was too big for this small weapon. Warg was fine with it. Pilna couldn't use it at all so most of them may use it without any problems. Then Jaghira asked about the range of this weapon. Kosuke said it's pretty far, something around 50 meters. Danan asked Kosuke how many crossbows they may create. Kosuke answered that the amount would be around 300. However, they also needed to create arrows. That's a problem since they didn't have that much resources. Silphy said it's okay. They also needed some weapons for reserve, so she offered to make 300 crossbows and 5,000 arrows. Since they needed more iron, Silphy said they also need to get more resources tomorrow, at the moment, it was possible to create 202 arrows. That was pretty much. Then Jaghira told Danan she was going to try it out now. Danan hoped she wouldn't do anything bad with this weapon. Well, he also wanted to take the crossbow and 100 arrows. He also gave it to Melty. Silphy said they don't need to worry if there aren't enough weapons or materials since Kosuke can make everything. Well, she shouldn't say such things when Melty is standing nearby. She already has some dirty thoughts. That was a mistake. Silphy said they were going to visit the elders. Kosuke did his part of the job, so she wanted to hear what they would say. It was evening. The elder elf was glad the wall was done, but she still was doubtful if the human won't betray them. Well, they were too old to think normally, so Silphy was getting annoyed by their behavior. Anyway, they were going to keep the promise. The elder elf said they will send them 20 spirit archers for help. Kosuke had no idea who those so-called spirit archers were. Silphy explained to him, they're the warriors who can use the spirit magic to shoot. Their arrow gets twice more speed than it usually has, and when the arrow lands into the target, it blows. Kosuke was amazed. The elder elf said they can go. Moreover, she knew they wanted to spend some time together, so she didn't want to hold them up. Silphy got blush. They started talking about their future children. That was absolutely confusing. Silphy couldn't listen to them anymore and just took Kosuke and rushed away from here. Well, they didn't like to be in company with these olds. Silphy was mad at them, then suddenly they saw their old friend, Nate. He wanted to stop them again, but Silphy wasn't in the mood to talk with him now. She landed a powerful punch right between his eyes. Too annoying guy, the hit was really good. After she punched him, she felt better. Kosuke asked why this guy was always that hostile to her. Silphy answered it was because he wanted to take revenge on her for his parents. There was a story. It happened three years ago. A rebellion occurred in the Marinard Kingdom. Silphy sneakily entered their common warehouse and stole all the spirit stones. Of course, she was chased by the guards, and there were Nate's parents among those guards. However, Danan's refugee squad met the Holy Kingdom's army. Of course, it was going to end really badly for them since the refugees had literally no chances against them. Silphy couldn't just watch this terrible massacre. The anger took over her mind and she attacked the Holy Kingdom's army. In the end, her skin color had been changed to dark and her muscles had got stronger. Yes, when the elf goes furious, he gets possessed by the dark powers and becomes the death machine. The elves whose skin color was changed to dark were called Tainted, and this is the reason Nate hates her that much. But Kosuke also wanted to know about what happened to Nate's parents. Silphy said they and a lot of other elves died that day because she lost her mind. The elves guards, including Nate's parents, entered the fight against the Holy Kingdom's army and they died. The Holy Kingdom's army was destroyed and they retreated quickly. It was done at the cost of a lot of elves' lives. Kosuke was astonished that she killed more than 2,000 soldiers by herself, so her dark skin color marked her as the cruel murderer. Her body changed a lot because of the dark powers. Kosuke listened to her story and just smiled. He told her she shouldn't care too much about her past. Moreover, he loved her, and he didn't worry about what she did before. Silphy smiled. She was thankful to Kosuke's kindness. She got closer and they looked into each other's eyes. They were holding their hands tight. Tonight, their relationship got even stronger than it was. It was the seventh day of survival. Kosuke almost finished upgrading the crossbow, and a few more things, and finally, done. The improved crossbow. Well, Kosuke couldn't use it normally since it was way harder than the usual crossbow. Then he realized he needed to just think about this like he is in the game. And it worked. 
Without this cheat ability, he wouldn't be able to do that. He tried to do a test shot. As expected, it was way stronger than the usual crossbow, but it seemed that this weapon would be possible to use only for someone strong. Okay, now Kosuke needed to use the forge. He noticed that he could craft some glassware stuff. It seems that it might be used for making potions. So he decided to make the brewing stand right now. Well, he needed a lot of materials for it, so it looked a bit hard. While the forge was working, Kosuke opened his achievements window. There were some new achievements he got, but it would be hard to say what these achievements gave him as a reward. There also appeared more skills he could increase. He used some points to increase his endurance, speed, and shooting skills. Then Sylphie entered the room. Kosuke said hello to her, but she was naked so immediately became blush. She couldn't take it so she ran away. Kosuke was wondering if she just loses her mind every night but then becomes Tsundere back. Kosuke didn't mind. The contrary, he really liked her personality. The breakfast was ready. Silphi made an angry face and told Kosuke to not remind her about their last night. He just agreed. Better to not argue with Silphi when she's in her Sundere mode. She asked him if he finished his work with crafting crossbows. It was time to give them to the guys and girls and then go for some iron ore. They headed to the canyon. There was a good place for mining. Jaghira wanted to test her new crossbow so badly. She took it and rushed to hunt immediately. Well, she never liked using simple bows so having such a cool weapon as a crossbow made her feel really happy. Pilna asked Kosuke to make sure if he could craft a shooting type weapon especially for her. Well, Kosuke had no idea what he could do now sadly but it still needs time to think up something for her wings. Pilna told them she goes into the air to scout the area. She quickly flew away. Now it was time to mine and mine hard. They were waiting for some trick from Kosuke and he pleased them with his new focus. He was jumping and placing the blocks under himself. In the next moment, he ended up at the top of the canyon. Then he put one more block to safely step on the ground. But how did he suppose to mine from that position? Well, Kosuke had an answer for it too. He just started digging blocks like it's just a game. Stone blocks were disappearing one by one. Silphy and Era were just staring at these hella crazy miracles. Silphy wondered if he could just rush the kingdom's walls like that. It actually was true. Then Era told she was going to get some special herbs. Kosuke continued working hard. And after some time, he dug the entire canyon and turned it into a large quarry. He had a lot of iron, stone, and even some mithril. When Ara heard the word mithril, she became excited. Had she heard it right? Kosuke showed her this thing. It was mithril for sure. That looked pretty precious. Even Silphy was excited and told him to not tell anyone about that. Well, now it would be better to hide this material in the inventory. However, Ara wasn't ready to give him this little piece of mithril back. Well, it seemed that she wanted it so bad. Kosuke gave it to her as a present. She was very happy. Pilna and Jaghira came back and were shocked when they saw what happened here. And they got even more surprised after they realized it was done with only Kosuke's powers. Later they came back to the village. Melty met them and asked how it was going. There was news from scouts that Gizmas have entered the forest. It meant that they needed to organize a unit with our light-footed personnel. Danan was thinking the same way. Meanwhile, Kosuke was doing something interesting. Ira asked him about this strange thing he was using now. Kosuke told her it's called a brewing stand. He could make some potions with it. Kosuke was going to create some by using the herbs Ira had collected. Then Kosuke opened the craft window to see what he could do now. He was surprised when he realized there was a powder. But there were two ways to craft it. Interesting but also dangerous. He had nothing to say but absurd. Did he just copy-paste Ara? Okay, it's time to craft potions. After some time, he made a lot of potions. Ara was wondering if it was something useful. There were healing potions, disease potions, and cure poison potions. Ira wanted to know the way it can be used. Kosuke explained to her that he has no idea, but maybe all you need is just to drink it all up and it would work. Ira looked at him suspiciously. She couldn't believe all these potions weren't fake. She ordered Kosuke to give her all the potions he made. Her eye was like a bottomless pit, so Kosuke felt a bit scared and gave her everything she asked for. Today, she was really strange. Well, better to say she was creepy. It was the training time. Danan gave a signal and everyone shot. They were trying hard. Kosuke was chilling under the tree. Silphi came here and asked what he was doing. Kosuke told her there's an interesting thing called a loom. He crafted it quickly and was trying this thing out. He was going to make a lot of clothes. For example, it would be useful for making bandages. Then Silphi realized she wanted to find some new clothes for him. Kosuke smiled. He was surprised she remembered all the details so well. They headed to the warehouse. Their elf friends gladly welcomed them. And of course Kosuke had a present for these guys. They let them enter the warehouse. 
When they entered, they met a beautiful elf woman. Her name is Risa. Silphy said they need some clothes for Kosuke. Risa said that he can ask her for everything. Then Kosuke used this opportunity and asked her for some glue, leather, and alcohol. She was a bit surprised by such a strange request, but she was glad to help them. While Kosuke was looking for the materials he needed, Silphy found clothes for him. She offered Kosuke to wear it. Then he finally showed up in his new look, Kosuke in elf folk clothes. It looked pretty nice and Kosuke felt great. Risa actually thought it didn't look good enough because of his dark hair. Then she showed him how to wear it right. Then he was ready to continue his work. He looked pretty cool. When Sylphie and Kosuke came back, they saw Ayara. She was looking pretty tired and upset for some reason. Then she told them she tested it all out. And it was strange. These potions had no side effects, at least now, and were working instantly. It was hard to rate such absurd potions normally. Kosuke was puzzled. Then Era explained to him better. She said even if it's that good it may be bad to give it to everyone since they don't know how it works and it may affect their health. Then her face changed in sadness. Era couldn't hold back anymore. She started crying. She realized she was mistaken and apologized for everything she said. Silphie and Kosuke didn't get what was happening and they tried to calm her down. Silphie told him to continue working while they would be talking with Era. Kosuke had a lot of thoughts about Era. She was a very nice girl. Of course, as every court mage, she is pedant and has a specific personality. But what could make her feel bad? Then Silphy asked Kosuke to come here. It seemed that they needed to have a serious talk. Ira told him that she was jealous of his abilities. He understood everything. She was working hard to get at least something useful. And then there appears a guy that can create such a miracle stuff without putting any effort in it. Then it was an obvious reaction. But Ira was apologizing for her behavior since she thought he was just a lucky guy beloved by God. But then she realized he got these abilities in exchange for his previous life. Parents, friends, his home, he lost everything and ended up here. Kosuke said he wasn't angry at her at all so there were no problems. But he noticed that Sylphie and Melty were a bit sad too. Sylphie said she had a thought she might be jealous of his abilities too. Melty was the same so they apologized for that. But Kosuke actually hadn't thought too much about that. He was just okay with his new life in another world. Moreover, he got such powerful abilities close to being God's one. He also was still thankful to Silphie for saving his life that day so he wanted to repay them all by doing goods. They looked at him and realized this world gave them this cool guy. Kosuke was glad to live in this village with them too. Aira was looking way better now. It seemed that she was happy that Kosuke forgave her. Then he reached out his hand. She was a bit surprised. Well, she didn't know about his world's manners, so he told it's a handshake, an important ritual for friends. Then, Ira shyly shaked Kosuke's hand. At that moment, everyone felt the atmosphere became very calm and peaceful. He offered others to do the same. This ritual made them all feel way better. Silphy told Kosuke to continue crafting items. Tomorrow, they finally will go for a gizma hunt. At nighttime, Kosuke was in his workshop as usual. Today, Kosuke had a lot of thoughts. This day was very calm. But this incident with Era made him feel worried about his abilities. He was lucky that Era wasn't really jealous and a bad person. If there would be someone else instead of her, he would have been dead already. He even thought about using it less than before. But then Silphie changed his mind. She said his craft abilities are very important for them. Somehow she understood what he was thinking about. She told Kosuke she will protect him from anything so he shouldn't worry about this too much. She was ready to stay on his side no matter what would happen. Kosuke was a bit embarrassed of her words. A girl protects a boy. This world was really strange. Kosuke said he was going to take part in their hunt tomorrow, but they needed to wake up earlier than usual. When it was morning, they were already roaming the forest. Then Kubi noticed something. She told Silphi and Kosuke to stop. Kosuke and Silphi were ready. Kubi looked at the ground in front of them. It was a bit damaged. It meant that gizmas were somewhere nearby. They were going to check it and threw a stick. When it landed there, something huge suddenly blew the ground. The cloud of dust dissolved, and they saw a gizma rushing at them. It was time to fight. The enemy rushed at them. Silphi drew the blade and was going to attack gizmas from behind. Kosuke's strategy was simple. Shoot and run. He was very good at shooting thanks to his superpowers. Kubi and Kosuke shot at once. First blood. But it wasn't enough to kill the monster. The gizma rushed right at Kosuke, but he wasn't going to run away. He had an idea. He did another shot. Kubi told him to retreat, but he was going to face the enemy with his perfect plan. The gizma jumped at Kosuke, but he wasn't a fool. He put the block right in front of the monster, and the gizma's head blew up. No way. That was pretty damn close. And it actually looked a bit disgusting. Well, Kosuke actually wanted to use Mr. Woodspike. They had no idea what he was talking about. By Mr. Woodspike, Kosuke meant this thing, but it was a bit small, so he wasn't sure if it would work. 
Then Kubi told them to continue their way. Their strategy was simple. Kubi was baiting monsters to attack and then Kosuke was using blocks to blow their heads. Meanwhile, Silphie was killing the insects from behind. That was pretty easy. Kosuke was glad his plan worked well. They also upgraded the wall with Mr. Woodspike so the defense was ready too. All the soldiers had crossbows and a lot of arrows. Then Kosuke got an idea. He put some blocks. No one had an idea what he was trying to do. Then he destroyed the first block and... What? Well, never mind. Kosuke just broke physics laws for another time. Everyone expected something like that, but they still were astonished. Now they understood Ira's feelings. They couldn't stop getting surprised. The hunt was in full swing. Then Kubi stopped. She heard a group of gizmas is coming right here and there might be a lot. Kubi, Silphie, and Kosuke headed to the place where the sound was. There might be three or four or even more enemies. Then Kubi pointed forward. The squirrel girl and the snake girl with the lizard girl on her back were running away from gizmas. The enemies almost caught them. The situation was really bad. Then the squirrel girl, Nark, jumped at the tree and baited the enemies to attack her instead. They needed to save the lizard girl since she was injured hard. The enemy struck the tree so hard that Nark lost balance and started falling down. Sylphie noticed her at the right moment. She gave a command to Kubi and Kosuke to shoot properly. They immediately shot at once. Sylphie chopped off the insect's head easily. Then she was going to help those ones. The snake girl was running away. It was really close. Then Kosuke drew another arrow and shot into the enemy. He told her to calm down and stand here. The moment the gizma jumped at Kosuke, he put the block in front of his head. The insect got hit but didn't die. Kosuke drew an arrow again and shot into the insect. Good. Kubi and Nark shot at once and killed the last gizma here. They did such a nice job. Well done. They felt okay except the lizard girl. She was injured hard as we know. She broke her leg so badly that you can feel her pain while looking at it. Then Kosuke realized he had all the stuff to repair her bones quickly. Aira rated his medicine level as very high so he was very confident in what he was about to do. Kosuke took her leg and told to not move. Then he used the potion to wash the wound. It was painful. Then it was time to use the splint. He never tried to do that, but he remembered that all he needs to do is to think about that like it's a game. There appeared a button, Use. He pressed it, and then his body started doing all the work by itself. No way. The lizard girl was shocked by how better she started feeling herself. Her leg was getting better and better by every second. And then after a few seconds, the splint disappeared and the lizard's leg was repaired successfully. Then he offered her to take a healing potion for the prophylactics. The snake girl had no words to describe her feelings at that moment. And when the lizard woke up and started walking normally, all of them lost their mind. What the heck was that? The lizard girl bowed down and thanked Kosuke for help. Without his help, she could lose her leg forever. Kosuke told her to not move too much since he wasn't sure if the healing process was finished. She lost a lot of blood so it would be better to take care of herself. Then they started counting their frags. 10, 11, 12, 13. They killed 13 gizmas. That's a lot. After that, they headed back to the village. When they came back, they met Danan. He asked if those crossbows were working well against the enemies. Everyone proved that. They were doing a hit-and-run strategy, but it was still hard to fight against them since they needed more strength. For everyone's safety, Sylphie offered to gather in six-member groups. Danan absolutely agreed. Then Danan immediately headed to tell the information about new formations. Kosuke noticed that Danan had some problems with his leg. Kosuke asked him to wait. He asked him to sit down and sham him his leg. First he wanted to go, but others told him to calm down and wait for some time. Then Kosuke took a splint. Danan was surprised. What was he about to do? He was sure it wouldn't work. It shouldn't work at all. Were they thinking he was such an idiot? He was yelling at them to stop, but when the process of healing started, he realized there was a miracle happening right now. Everyone just smiled. And when the healing process ended, Danan realized he didn't feel any pain. What the heck was that? Then Kosuke told him to drink up the healing potion. After that, Danan felt way, way better than before. It was even tasty. He tried to move his leg and was amazed. What a nice feeling to move your limbs with no pain. He couldn't believe it was for real. He felt like the fairies were just laughing at him now. He walked away with the words, I must repay you for that. They saw Danan smile. That's a rare thing. So, they have a cool doctor named Kosuke-san. He didn't expect it to work that good. Then Sylphie ordered them to call Melty. When Melty came here, she saw a lot of Gizma's meat. That's a really lot. Well, she was strong, so it wasn't hard for her to transport all this stuff to the warehouse. But Sylphie had a better idea. To keep all this meat in Kosuke's inventory. Well, he wasn't happy with her idea, but he had no choice. Today, they were going to give some meat to civilians since they had a lot. Then Melty asked him to take it into his inventory. Well, he was happy that Melty wasn't his master. In that case, he would have died from fatigue.
After some time, Kosuke made a place where he was repairing civilians' bones like a professional doctor. When Era saw it, she was amazed. She entered the tent to check what was happening, and she was shocked when she saw the process with her own eyes. She wanted to help Kosuke with that. There was a rabbit girl with broken leg. Ira did some work and... Nothing happened. Nothing changed. There were no reasons to use splint. Then Kosuke asked Era to let him do something. There was a button, use. Once he pressed it, the process of healing immediately started. The rabbit immediately felt something started happening. Ira had no words to say. When Kosuke looked at her face, he saw her amazed like she was looking at a miracle. He decided to leave her in that state. Absurd! This time everyone's reaction was like that. But it doesn't mean they weren't happy. The contrary. The more Kosuke can do with his powers, the better the situation in the village. Later, the warriors were coming back from hunt, and thanks God there were no injured ones among them. So now they needed to think up what to do next. Silphie was worrying if it's a good idea to take Kosuke for their hunt on Gizmas. No one wanted his death. Kosuke had some ideas about the defense and was ready to take part in upgrading it instead of going for hunt which is dangerous. There was a chance that the fight might start at the nighttime, which is not good since they have no lights. So, Kosuke was going to solve this problem. And now everyone expected something crazy from him again. Kosuke put the torch on the block. That was his plan. To install the light everywhere. It might work, so why not? They were trying to understand how this torch was standing on this block without any support. But that was another Kosuke's strange ability. Sylphie said she didn't want to cut too much trees, but Kosuke convinced her they have no choice, and anyway, this part of the forest will be destroyed after the Gizma's attack. Sylphie gave up on that point and they started working. It was almost night, but it wasn't dark. Kosuke had done with everything he wanted. All the territory was lighted with the torches. Sylphie was sad that they destroyed too much trees today. Well, the defense near the walls was upgraded very well, and now no one monster would be able to break through it. Then Kubi asked Kosuke why these torches were that strange, like the fire was kinda everlasting. Sylphie didn't surprise. It looks like she stopped getting surprised at some point. Ira was staring at this miracle. She felt like she was getting in contact with something transcendent. Then Sylphie told the guards watch the walls during all the night. Kosuke looked at the moon. He was wondering why it has red color, but Sylphie didn't notice anything strange. Ira didn't notice it too, but Kosuke was sure it's red, and it meant only one. The bloodbath is coming. The soldiers were ready to shoot the enemy. The gizmas rushed into attack. Once they saw the insects, they shot. The rain of arrows fell on the monsters. They couldn't do anything. Kosuke was watching the scene from the wall. He was glad his defense was working that nice. Jagira was really happy to use such a nice weapons and thanked Kosuke for making it for them. There were a lot of gizmas attacking them, but they were dying faster than getting close to the walls. And even if they would get closer, they would fall into the trap with Mr. Wood Spikes. They were shooting really fast. Kosuke was wondering how strong they are. Jagira said they have a very strong bodies, so even if they would use the improved version of crossbow, they wouldn't get tired of shooting. Kosuke started thinking about making more of it. Danan was giving orders to the guards. They were doing fire right by his commands. It was easy to shoot the enemy despite it was nighttime, thanks to Kosuke that he lighted the territory. They maybe don't even need elders' help. They were doing very well by themselves. Then Melty came to Kosuke to say that they have not much arrows left. Well, by simple maths, he realized that the amount of arrows they had was enough only for 10 minutes maximum. So he gave them some more arrows. Well, Melty was surprised to see that much. It would be enough now. Then he saw Jaghira reached out her hand. Kosuke realized she was standing nearby him just because she wanted to shoot more than others. Well, it wasn't bad. Kosuke asked Melty how much the gizma's meat is stored. Melty answered it usually takes half of the day to go bad. Then Kosuke decided to collect some meat. Yes, right at the battlefield. Crazy guy. Jaghira was ready to help him with that. Kosuke headed to the command post. Danan asked him what happened. Then Kosuke told him his idea. Danan said they need to take some melee fighters for that. And Gelda was ready to help with that. But her sword? Well, it was quite bad. She was too strong for such weak weapons, so it was getting bad really quickly. Kosuke realized he can make a special weapon for her. She requested a powerful mace with a huge shield. Kosuke headed to the forge. He was looking for something looking like the mace, but there was nothing similar. Then he tried to imagine it properly and the mace suddenly appeared in the craft window. That wasn't too hard to make it. Then he made a huge shield. But Kosuke also wanted to make some kind of weapon for himself. He had some ideas. When Silphy heard that Kosuke was about to enter the battlefield, she started getting worried for his life. Kosuke gave Gelda her new equipment. She was very happy swinging her long mace, which actually looked small in her hands. Kosuke got a bit tired of just holding it. He gave it to Silphie and she was swinging it easily like a wooden stick. He was wondering how powerful this girl is. 
Danan and others gathered near the gates. He introduced his best soldiers. The reptile, Zumiru, Donan was her disciple, Lord Leonard, a swordsmanship master, and the big girl named Sumeru, a true death machine. She was glad to meet Kosuke. These soldiers will help Kosuke to collect the Gizma's meat safely. Era was about to help him too. He never saw her magic, so it will be for the first time. Sylphie and Kosuke looked at each other. It meant they were ready. Everyone was ready. A powerful, unbeatable squad was going to kill all the enemies and protect Kosuke from them. They opened the gates. It's gonna be epic. Kosuke and others left outside. There were no monsters around, so they quickly got all the Gizma's meat. Kosuke's new friend still couldn't get used to his abilities. Sumiru was wondering if it was some rare kind of magic, but to her surprise, Danan said it's not like that. Even if it was a special type of magic, she liked him. Kosuke felt embarrassed when they were talking about him that much. The lizard master Zamiru told them to not be careless. The monsters could come here at any moment. Gerda agreed, but she didn't worry about that at all, since she had a new powerful weapon thanks to Kosuke. Zamiru was jealous of her. She wanted a new weapon too. Zamiru asked Danan if his cool weapon was made by Kosuke too. He told her that Kosuke was a great blacksmith. Kosuke noticed she was staring at him. It was easy to guess what she wanted to ask him. Leonardo also wanted to upgrade his swords. Sumeru was fighting just with a large wooden log. Everyone wanted to get strong blades and axes and of course they were staring at Kosuke at that moment. He looked at Sylphie. Maybe she would spare him? How naively. So, Kosuke told them to just wait for a while. He would make it for them. But first, he needed them to say what kind of weapon they wanted to see. Suddenly, they heard a loud scream from the forest side. It was easy to guess who it was. What they're gonna do? Run back to the walls or take the fight right here. Leonardo told everyone to not be afraid that much. They were ready to slice the enemy or smash. Depends on what weapon they use. Sylphie told Kosuke to not worry about this and just continue collecting meat. So, let's go. The fight is gonna be epic. The monsters were coming. Kosuke was fine with the fact that everyone felt pretty calm. The craft Avengers entered the battle. Danan made first blood and parted the insect's head like a melon. Gerda was stunning enemies with shields and then blowing their heads. Yes, like a melon's. It was Leonardo's time to shine. He was ready to attack. Then he rushed forward and sliced the Gizma's body like if he was a true samurai. Zamiru was making highlights too, and Sumeru, well, that was pretty cruel. Can't even tell you anything about this. It's just the power of Oni. Suddenly, they saw a light coming from the side. It was Era's magic. She was casting a powerful thunderbolt spell. And then, lightning. The entire battlefield was covered in thunderbolts. Zeus nervously smokes on the sidelines. Kosuke was amazed. Was it the real power of magic? It's incredible. Sylphie realized that had never seen any magic before. So it was his first time. Understandable. Well, the only time he had seen it was when Sylphie recovered his wounds, but Era's magic was something transcendent. It's epic! Era was glad to see them praising her. At that moment, Kosuke realized that there were a lot of interesting and cool guys and girls, so why was everyone astonished by his abilities? Sylphie just gave him a clear answer. Everyone who was training a lot can do this. The Gizma's head was perfectly chopped off. Kosuke thought she was just joking with him. So then everyone here was more interesting than him. Well, it was understandable. He was amazed by his fighting skills and they were shocked by his craft abilities. That was fair enough. Okay, now Kosuke needs to continue his job. They finished with the monsters, so it was time to go back to the village. This night was especially great. They did everything they planned pretty well. 216 Gizma's corpses, that's a lot. Everyone will be happy to know they have that much food. Moreover, it gets really tasty when you cook it. Leonardo wanted to hunt for more meat. But well, first he needed to get his new blades. Everyone wanted that from Kosuke, and of course he couldn't refuse. Sumeru already knew what she wanted, something huge and heavy, and Sylphie wanted something long. The hint was obvious, and unfortunately Kosuke got that. I hope you didn't. Then someone touched his shoulder. It was Ira. She wanted to get a magic rod with the mithril stone, but Kosuke wasn't sure if he would be able to do that now. First he needed a craft instruction. Ira was pretty fast since she wanted to get her new weapon as much as everyone else. Well, now Kosuke was ready to listen to their wishes. They were waiting for it, and after they told Kosuke everything, there was only Sylphie left. But she said she would be fine with everything he would make for her. But Kosuke wanted to get more description of the weapon she wanted. She decided it would be something sharp, something like scimitar. Sometime later Kosuke was working hard in the forge. He got an idea to make a weapon made of mithril. It would be nice. Then he put some mithril to the furnace. It was the ninth day of Kosuke's survival game. Pilna came to Sylphie with good news. There were no gizmas around. It seemed that tonight's battle showed them who was the real ruler in these lands. It seemed they got away right at dawn. More good news. Leonardo, Zamiru, and Sumeru got their new weapons. Wait, this one is really strange. Never mind, it still looks powerful enough. Sad they couldn't test it out right now. 
Kosuke was glad to see their happiness. And there was a special one for Sylphie. She almost forgot that she was asking him about that. He was making it for six hours. She immediately realized what it was. Once she drew the blade, everyone instantly got shocked. A mithril blade. So beautiful. Sylphie asked if he gave a name for this weapon. Kosuke actually didn't think about that. But while he was making it, he was thinking of the moon. So maybe something like Moonlight or Blue Moon? No. Pale Moon. Pale Moon sounds great. It was as beautiful as the blade by itself. What emotions. Ira was wondering how strange it was to get a mithril blade that was made by a human. But mithril weapons actually always were only for royal family members. Wait, how did she appear here so unexpectedly? She brought here a craft recipe for the magic rod. Then Sylphie asked Kosuke to bring the Gizma's corpse right here. She wanted to test her new blade out. He quickly pulled it out of his inventory. Sylphie swung the blade and it easily got right through the Gizma. Everyone was staring at how Gizma's body was getting separated by little pieces. Epic. But well, it might be dangerous to use such a sharp blade. She needed to get more training to not accidentally chop off her own limbs. Leonardo and Zamiru offered Her Majesty to train with them later. Kosuke had been working hard all this time so now he wanted to go to rest. Kosuke put some things to craft and sat down. Suddenly he remembered about the achievements window. Maybe something interesting appeared here. His stats were pretty good. He had 12 skill points so he could increase something he needed the most. He didn't want to think too much and just did it quickly. Well, what about achievements? He had a lot of things done at the moment, and most of them were new. Most of them were about killing monsters, doing something for the first time, and etc. And all the buffs were pretty cool, so nice. And of course, there were some achievements he didn't expect to see. He got more than five girls in his harem and the achievement god noticed it. Kosuke didn't even guess that he had seduced that many girls. Moreover, he hadn't known about that. And once he imagined it, he realized how huge his harem might be at the moment. There might be even those elven elders. No, better to not think about that. He already had relationships with Sylphie so he could think about such things. There also was another interesting achievement. He survived the Red Moon Knight, and for that now he was able to upgrade his skills level. It looked interesting. Tonight, Kosuke told Sylphie that their village may be attacked every week. It was pretty possible looking at what kind of abilities he has. She said she would tell the elders about his words. They could trust them and they, of course, would help with resources. Kosuke thanked Sylphie for being so kind. She said it was just for their kingdom and, of course, to make him work less. He was trying hard all the time, so it would be nice to have more free time. Then Kosuke said he needed to go to make a magic rod for Ira. But suddenly, Sylphie grabbed his hand. He turned around to say something, but she suddenly kissed him. She didn't like him talking about other girls in her presence. Kosuke apologized for being like that, but now she was too excited to stop. She was going to punish a bad slave. Then she suddenly grabbed him and headed to the bedroom. After the punishment night, Kosuke felt embarrassed. It was so bad to remember. Sylphie told him to wake up. It was time to go. It seemed she felt good after the night adventures. Eleventh day. Kosuke was working hard, and twelfth and thirteenth were funny and hard too. The more they were working, the more powerful their little empire was getting. And finally. On the fifteenth day of the survival, they were prepared for the Red Moon Night. However, the moon was still normal. From what Pilna said, there were no gizmas around the forest. Even in the desert, they hadn't noticed them too much. Kosuke noticed that the moon was especially beautiful tonight. Sylphie agreed with him. She wanted to see the blue moonlight, but she was fine with this one too. Well, it seemed that there was no red moon this time and it wouldn't happen in the near future, but it didn't mean that their hard work was useless. Anyway, it was worth it since in the end, they have a really powerful fort that could destroy any enemy's attack. And Kosuke easily guessed that Sylphie wanted to get her kingdom back. It wasn't hard to guess. She was thinking of it from the beginning, and to her surprise, Kosuke didn't mind helping her. Moreover, he wanted to make their relationship stronger. She was really surprised by his words, but they still weren't strong enough to handle the entire kingdom. Anyway, Kosuke was kinda calm. He was confident in the fort they had built. Even Sylphie got calm while listening to his speech. He was just an optimistic guy. Then she thought a bit and made an important decision. She was going to bring the kingdom back. Kosuke saw the pure determination in her eyes. Everyone was astonished by what Sylphie said at their next meeting. No one expected it. Well, at least that quickly. But everyone also agreed it was time to do something. Getting their kingdom back was just a matter of time. The saint bastards must be kicked out from their homeland. However, they knew they couldn't bring it back that easily. They still had not enough power. But they had a trump card. Kosuke. Of course he was going to help them. Kosuke at that moment realized that all his life here was so epic he didn't notice it lasted just for a few weeks. A month ago he was sitting at his home and now he, Kosuke, was going to the Omit Desert to build up the fort here. 
Kosuke made a little landmark to not forget where they were. They had a goal to build a base here. Kosuke made eight marks here. Now it was time to find the best place for building. They have come a long way from the village. Maybe it would take 10 days to come back there. There's a map of the territory. You can take a better look at it if you want. Suddenly, Leonardo put his hand on Kosuke's shoulder and said that he would be happy if he would make a mithril sword especially for him. Zamiru got mad at him because he was asking that straightly with no excuse. Of course, she wanted it too. Their sight was so demonic that Kosuke couldn't handle it. But then a very loud, explosive sound distracted them so they looked back. It was a new Kosuke's weapon. So cool. But well, Kosuke told her to not shoot too much since they had not many bullets. No one liked this weapon actually since it was pretty loud, but it was effective enough to use it. Gizma just died by one shot. Silphy told Kosuke to take the monster's meat to the inventory. Leonardo asked Silphy about the place where they should build their base. Silphy pointed towards a little hill. It looked like the highest point in this desert. Their choice was logical, so Kosuke agreed with them and started preparing for building. But first they needed to prepare a camp to sleep tonight. Kosuke started doing his job. First he needed to make the landscape flat. It was done pretty quick. By the way, he unlocked a new ability. Now he can place four blocks at once. It looked crazy. Silphy even forgot how to get surprised. She expected everything but not something like this. And after a few minutes the entire house was done. Too quick. Now it was time to build the walls. Well, Kosuke had really crazy abilities which cannot be explained even by magic. He was working two, no, three more times quicker than usual. How can it be possible? Well, one day they will realize that in this world everything is possible. Kosuke made the walls in a few minutes. Now they don't need to be afraid of monsters. No one expected it to be that quick so they had a lot of free time. Silphy told everyone to take a better look at the walls outside and tell her if they would find any problem with it. Then Kosuke started making stairs. Of course they needed to get on the walls, somehow. He noticed that someone was staring at him just now. It was obviously Leonardo and Zamiru. They wanted to get their mithril blades so much, so Kosuke just tried to run away from them. They started chasing him. He was faster than they expected him to be, and of course he used all his abilities to get rid of them, but it seemed that he got trapped himself. Leonardo and Zamiru were smiling cruelly. There was nothing good in their words. Kosuke told them that he didn't want to do anything with Mithril anymore without Silphy's permission, so he told them to ask her about that if they want their weapons that much. Then Pilna appeared right here. She told Kosuke that she came here to save his life. He was happy to hear that. However, there was a condition. She was ready to help him only if he would make a weapon especially for her. That was pretty unfair. And fortunately for Kosuke, Silphy finally appeared here. She had a lot of questions for them. What was going on? And once she realized this mess was happening because of Kosuke, she struck him hard in the stomach. Painful. Then Leonardo and Zamiru asked Silphy straightly to let Kosuke make mithril weapons especially for them. Silphy sighed. She was glad they were helping them, but she couldn't let it be like that. Mithril weapons are especially strong and serious, really serious, so there should have been a reason for making it for them. But well, now they were in a different situation, so why not? Silphy said she didn't mind if he would make it for them. But in exchange, they must protect Kosuke all the time. It's important. Silphy told Kosuke to make mithril weapons for them. Leonardo and Zamiru were very happy. Kosuke also didn't mind if they really would become his securities, so he said yes. But there also was Pilna. She looked sad, and Kosuke had some cool news to raise her mood. He made a special weapon for harpies. Pilna immediately resurrected from depression. But what was this weapon? It looked like a melee thing, but it wasn't like that at all. Kosuke was going to show them everything, so he told them to gather on the wall. A strong explosion astonished everyone. That was amazing. Pilna was excited. She wanted to try it out immediately. Kosuke said it's called a grenade. He showed them how to use it. Just throw it and boom. So nice. Explosion feels pretty strong. Kosuke told Pilna to be careful with it. She was happy to get a weapon she and other harpies could use. Pilna was going to test it out. She flew out far enough and then threw the grenade. That's epic. Then she got an idea how to throw it in different ways, and it worked very well. She got used to it quickly. The wooden logs were blowing so hard their sharp parts were going through other logs. Pilna was glad her new weapon works that great. It looked like something really powerful. Now they have a really hard advantage on the battlefield. Kosuke praised Pilna. She was doing really well with her wings. Then Kosuke asked Silphy what she was thinking of it. She looked thoughtful. Kosuke asked her if everything was okay, and she immediately came back to Earth, and of course they needed to eat something. They hadn't eaten anything for a long time. It was almost night, so they needed to cook dinner fast. All the group gathered near Kosuke's craft place. He was making food quickly. It was burgers, his world's tasty food. They agreed it looks tasty, and the taste actually was great. Thanks to God they have Kosuke. 
Then after the dinner, Silfi told Kosuke to tell them about today's plan. He said that he wanted Jagira and Pilna do something important. Then he put a lot of ammo on the table. He asked Jagira to shoot as much as she wanted. He just needed to check the durability of the rifle, something like a crash test. But it might be dangerous since there is a chance the rifle can explode if she will be shooting too much. But it didn't stop Jagira. Her eyes lit up with fire. She grabbed the rifle and rushed forward. It seemed that she had a lot of fun with it. Then Kosuke gave Pilna a case full of grenades. He asked her to test it out too. Well, now it was time to continue working on their base. While Pilna was preparing for the test, Kosuke was building more and more. Leonardo and Silfi were wondering how crazy his abilities are. And after a few minutes, he finished another building. So they have 20 barracks for now. That's great. He made it big enough so they can put around 16 people here. And if there's 20 barracks, then they can gather 320 people here. It sounds pretty nice. Then Kosuke realized he almost forgot to do something important. He started digging holes, yes, for toilets. He was a big fan of sanitation. Kosuke didn't even want to disagree with this fact. It was important to keep your place and yourself clean. Silfi and Leonardo agreed it's true. So he quickly dug some holes and started placing toilets. He did it really quickly and it looks nice, but it was not much. They needed more of it. After he finished his job with toilets, he immediately started working on the well. It's important to have a water source, especially if you are in the desert. So he did everything like in the game and he got what he wanted. He found a little water source. That's nice. So it was time to go back. He did a very hard job. So now they have four wells at their base. That should be enough. Silfi surprised Kosuke by the fact she can check the water's quality by using magic. Kosuke also noticed there were no trees and grass for some reason. This place was full of water for sure. So what was going on? Silfi told him the story of this place. Some magicians were trying the spirit stone magic out too much here and in the end it caused this hard dried climate. Kosuke wasn't happy with this news, he heard about the spirit stone a bit. It might be dangerous for them. Suddenly Kosuke remembered another thing he should have done. Leonardo was wondering what this guy was trying to do this time, and as you can guess, it was gonna be a mini farm. Leonardo looked at the dirt better and realized how good it is, he just took some dirt from the forest and brought it here. He said they need at least three days until the harvest would grow. Then he picked up a hoe and started working hard. Well, should I say they kept getting surprised? I guess no, but they almost got used to this irrationality. After a few minutes, Kosuke finished his job. Now it was time to put some seeds there. And after a few seconds, they already could see some sprouts growing. They had no idea what was going on. It was impossible to explain, but Kosuke also needed to put some water here to get his harvest more quickly. So he started building another well here. He put two blocks of water there and got an infinite water source. Well, he couldn't explain to them how he did it. He didn't know either. And it seems that they already figured out its infinity. So Kosuke just told them it's just a strange well and nothing else. It was an answer to all their questions. Then Jaghira came back to tell Kosuke she finished shooting all the ammos. Jaghira noticed Silfi was looking a bit thoughtful. Well, she couldn't explain to her what happened. She didn't even know how to tell about it and not look crazy in people's eyes. Jaghira had shot all the 500 ammos and didn't notice any problem with this rifle. It was shooting as good as before. Kosuke was a bit surprised. He didn't expect it to be that good. Well, anyway, he had a new weapon for her, just to be careful with it. Jaghira was happy to take this gift. Anyway, they have no problems with weapons for now. But well, maybe Kosuke's craft abilities made the rifle unbreakable or something like that. When Pilna came back, she was astonished to see a vegetable garden here. How quickly he did that. She was outside for just a few hours. Moreover, it was already growing. That's incredible. Well, okay. Kosuke wanted to ask Pilna how the test was. She said she found a way to bring more grenades at one time. There was around 5 kilos. Kosuke asked her if it wasn't too much for her. Pilna said it's okay. She was a strong girl in the end. Kosuke realized it's a pretty cool way to use grenades. Kosuke was looking like he was going to create an atomic bomb and give it to harpies to throw it down on the enemy. Silfi looked pensive for some reason. Kosuke asked her what they needed to do next. She was away with the fairies today, so she got a bit off guard when she heard his question. So she offered to have lunch first and then think about it better. That was a nice idea. After the lunch, they decided to divide by pairs. Jaghira with Pilna and Leonardo with Zamiru should do some scout work. Kosuke and Silfi were going to make more weapons. All of them got their tasks. They still needed to do a lot of work today. When they walked away, Kosuke immediately put the craft table here and forgery. It was time to make some bombs for harpies. All he needed was to imagine the image of the item he wanted to create. And then the craft recipe of the bomb appeared in the window. Well, 10 bombs would be enough for the first time. Then it was time to upgrade the rifles. Then Silfi suddenly addressed Kosuke. It seemed that she wanted to ask Kosuke about something important, and it was making her feel bad. 
She was worried if he felt good about his new job. He was living his normal life before and now he was making the military stuff every day. That was looking kinda sad for Sylphie. However, Kosuke didn't even think about it too much. As he said before, he got used to his new life quickly and moreover it feels better than his previous one. He was glad with his new life and had a lot of fun here even if he needs to work hard every day. Well, maybe he found himself in it. The only thing that might make him feel bad was the deaths that would happen soon because of his weapons. He was the one who brought the military stuff in this world so all the deaths will lay on his shoulders. Maybe he will be sent to hell by God. Wait, the hell? Sylphie wasn't familiar with the religion stuff so Kosuke told her about it a bit. Hell is the place where people who break God's law suffer hard forever. Well of course there's no proof of hell's existence but still everything in this world could be possible. Sylphie realized it's similar to the underworld. People in this world believe that every dead person goes to the sky and turns into a star that shines bright every night. It sounds romantic. Then Sylphie added, if hell exists for real then she would go there together with Kosuke. She didn't want to let him go there alone. He had no idea whether he should be happy with that or not. Maybe the demons would make him suffer less than it usually does Sylphie, and especially Melty. So maybe hell isn't that bad a place as he thought. Then Sylphie took his hand and told him that she would never let him suffer alone. Kosuke was about to start crying from the fact his mistress was such a kind person. So, it means he must do his best now. Maybe God would spare his soul after life. He didn't do these weapons just to kill for no reason. In the end, they wanted to save their brethren from the slavery and kick the enemy's asses out of their kingdom's walls. Kosuke absolutely agreed with Sylphie's words. To beat evil, you must become a bit evil too. And anyway, it would be better to just kill them all with no mercy, isn't it? Sylphie didn't even want to argue, so true. But anyways, first he wanted to show those bastards their real military power so they would understand it's better to not get in a conflict with them. Sylphie agreed. Their current plan was about hit-and-run strategy. It should cause the right effect. Harpies would attack their fort by using bombs, and if they would try to attack them too, then they would get a warm welcome with crossbows and grenades, and Kosuke was glad to present his new explosive weapon, a landmine. It blows once you touch the thread. It sounds dangerous, so Sylphie didn't really like it. Kosuke agreed it might be pretty much even for their situation. And then Kosuke put an interesting thing on the ground. It was TNT, a dynamite. They'll win the fight. It can be very helpful if used right. Kosuke still hadn't tested it out, so he wanted to see how it works somewhere far. Sylphie offered him to ask Era to cast fire from a far distance to blow this thing up. Kosuke already had an idea how they could use it. They can build a trap base. First they let the enemy's army enter the fort and then they do a big boom. And that's it. Even Sylphie was surprised by his cruelty. It sounded like a compliment, actually. She reminded him that he still didn't upgrade the rifle. Kosuke thought about it, but who needs a rifle now if he made something better and he was going to show it right now? There were four different types of guns. Pistol, revolver, rifle, and shotgun. Sylphie wanted to take a better look at it. It was heavier than it actually looked. Kosuke showed her how to shoot. First, take the right stance. Second, aim. And then, fire. Revolver and pistol are used to shoot from short distances. In Kosuke's world, people always fight by using guns. They forgot about melee weapon types, but Sylphie was wondering how she would be supposed to reload it during the fight. Well, Kosuke didn't actually think about it, since in his world, no one tries to attack into melee a man holding a gun. Then Sylphie took a shotgun. It was pretty cool. Kosuke took a rifle. First, Sylphie didn't get what was the difference between them both. Kosuke told her that the shotgun can shoot a bunch of bullets at once. It's actually a weapon that is used for a close distance. Then Kosuke offered her to go to the walls. He had some more weapons to set up there. First, it was a huge crossbow called a ballista. It's a huge crossbow for sure, and it launches huge arrows that can break any armor. The mechanism was pretty tight to use. The arrow was actually looking like a spear. Kosuke put an arrow there and loaded it. To launch the arrow, you need to use this lever. Kosuke did a shot for a test. Well, it just broke the stone for real. Such a crazy strength. Sylphie was surprised. But there was one more thing that was about to surprise her. It was a cannon. It's like a huge gun that shoots huge bullets. You need to load a cannonball inside it and fire it. Powder explodes and the cannon does a shot. Easy. But Kosuke needs a lot of iron to create cannonballs. Sad that it's impossible to create more of it. And well, he wasn't really sure if they needed too many guns since this world has magic which looks way more powerful than anything else. Maybe it was the reason why people didn't want to invent more technological weapons like this one. He loaded a cannonball inside the cannon and did a shot. Boom. It was pretty loud. Sylphie was astonished by how powerful it was. She had no words to say. It also blows when it lands and it means that there are little iron shards that can strike everyone standing nearby. That's a really strong gun. 
Well, the only thing they could create massively was only Ballista. Sylphie actually liked that revolver thing, it looked pretty cool and it fit her very well. He even tried to imagine her as a cowboy. Suddenly, Leonard and Zamiru ran up here. They got scared of that explosion so they thought that something dangerous was happening here. Others came here too. Well, they were on alert so of course any loud sound may scare them. Kosuke apologized for that, then he demonstrated to them his new guns that shoot that loudly. Jagira and Pilna were amazed, it's so cool. But Leonard and Zamiru didn't like only one thing about it. They didn't feel the warrior spirit in it. All the meaning of men's power of will and spirit in a fight would just disappear when this thing would appear on the battlefield. Then Leonard challenged Kosuke and asked him to shoot him with a pistol. Kosuke was afraid that he would reflect all the bullets for sure. But Leonardo looked pretty confident so Kosuke took a pistol and shot. Strike. All the bullets fell on the ground. They were sliced in two parts. Kosuke thought he ended up in an anime. It seemed that these weapons weren't a problem for them all. Beast's physical abilities were way above Kosuke's expectations. Sylphie also thought she wouldn't lose to a soldier with a pistol. Kosuke was wondering if there was a reason for making such weapons like this one. Well, they didn't think that way at all. And besides, they didn't mind using it in exchange if it would carry them to win. The only thing Sylphie was worried about was the Holy Kingdom. It would be really bad if they would get these guns. Kosuke even thought he made a mistake. Well, they decided to leave him alone for now. Kosuke was thinking of how to avoid the fight and get their kingdom back. Then Pilna suddenly addressed Kosuke. There was a harvest. They could collect it right now. What nice news. Kosuke almost forgot about that, so they wouldn't have any problems with food then. Five days later, they came back to the village with a lot of good news. They made a base with a strong defense and a lot of weapons. Moreover, they can live there since Kosuke had built enough barracks for people there. The villagers had no words to say. That was surprisingly great news. Now most of the refugees and Sylphie's family are still captured in slavery. That's why she was doing so much work with people here. They still were weak because they had not many soldiers. Besides, they have no goal to turn the kingdom into a bloodbath. It wouldn't be good. So she had another plan for that. They were going to the Omit Desert and would continue building more forts there. They needed more power. That's what they needed the most now. Sylphie also wanted to sneakily free the refugees from slavery and bring them to their forts. That's how she planned to increase their army. She made this plan a few days ago with Kosuke and others. The best way would be playing hit-and-run strategy. Once the knights will try to attack them, they will just take their guns and shoot them all. The first step would be bringing at least 50 people to their fort to test it all out. And so how many forts do you want to build? Danan asked Sylphie. She replied that it would be at least three forts in the end. First fort for the communication with elves, second would be their main base, and third would be as a defensive base in front. They have a nice image of how it looks. The defensive fort wouldn't be too far away from the kingdom to be closer to the enemy. It should be situated in the middle of Omit Desert. Danan understood their idea, and besides, Kosuke made a lot of strong weapons that would give them a very high advantage in battle. However, they still need more people, and Sylphite told them how they planned to free the slaves from the kingdom one by one. Danan was afraid that they were going to let them go with no food and clothes. Sylphie told him there's nothing to worry about since they have Kosuke. He can make a camp for them and give them anything they would need. So the plan sounded pretty solid, and there were no problems, at least at the current point. Sylphie was pretty confident it would work. Then Melty asked Sylphie about the way Kosuke works with the harvest. Once he heard Melty was asking something about him, he got scared. It's going to be really bad for him as always. Of course, Sylphie did it intentionally. She didn't even look at him. That's cruel. I would say she was just trolling him. So, Kosuke pulled out some haystacks from his inventory. Melty was very surprised to hear that they got a harvest in just a few days. Her sight was terrifying. Kosuke explained it to her as much as he could. It was still hard to imagine he could do almost everything that quick. Melty understood him. And anyway, it was still such a miracle he got that much harvest from just one field and all the crops were very high quality. Just in three days, he might be Jesus. And she quickly realized how she could exploit him, as always. Kosuke noticed Ira was looking at him. Well, no, she was looking into nowhere, before she couldn't even imagine it's possible to get a harvest that quickly, even with a special potion. And here appears a guy that does it without any magic stuff or anything else. What a mess. Still hard to get used to it. Sylphie asked them if they had any more questions to ask. It seemed that no one had any questions left, except our Oni girl. Sumeru wanted to make sure if they hadn't planned kicking the Holy Kingdom's asses up. Well, Sylphie didn't want to turn it into a bloodbath, but at the same time, they shouldn't just sit down and wait. Her Majesty planned to do a clean job, and for that, they needed to free all the slaves first. So, Sumeru was glad to hear that. She was glad with the current plan. The meeting had ended at that point. 
Sylphie and her people were going to get their homeland back at any cost. What determination. Kosuke was in a good mood today. He couldn't even imagine what would happen next. He knew it's going to be a hard and maybe long war against the kingdom. So, it's going to be especially interesting. Three days later, Sylphie got 50 people and they headed to the Omit Desert. On the same day, they reached their first base. And then three days later, after Kosuke finished working with fields, they headed to the middle of the desert. And after half day of their way, Kosuke finally found a good place for a camp. They didn't have much time until the sunset, so they should have been working fast. Kosuke quickly made the walls around. His friends didn't know about his abilities, so they were shocked. Well, Era was kind of used to it already, so her reaction was calm, and after some time, Kosuke built up the entire base. It was incredibly quick. All the professional builders were crying in a corner from sadness after seeing that. Kosuke also put a new building there, a water storage tank, and he also made bathrooms for boys and for girls. Later, they were chilling there. What a great end of the day. Kosuke couldn't even imagine it was possible to make something like this in a dry desert. Silphi and Sumeru were very happy and they had a lot of fun with this stuff. They thanked Kosuke for such a great gift. Taking a bath in the desert, isn't it a dream? Suddenly someone addressed Kosuke. It was a furry man. At first he didn't recognize him, but then realized it was his old friend Kubi. I apologize, I called him a girl in previous parts. Well, it just happens sometimes. Kubi asked Kosuke to help him wash his back since he couldn't do that by himself. He didn't mind helping him with that, and don't worry, there was no hidden subtext. This is just a party of true men. It was time to explore the desert better. This territory looked pretty well for their new base, but Silphy felt strange like something was wrong here. Then Ira got an idea and casted a magic sphere. Kosuke asked her what it was. It's the spell that detects magic waves. And as she thought there were a lot of magic waves, there might be a forbidden old mechanism underground that causes these waves. There also was a campfire. Then Sumeru remembered that there were no gizmas around even at nighttime. So it seemed that this place was somewhat unusual. Era didn't remember what Sumeru was talking about. Well, she was just sleeping well at that moment, so that's why she didn't remember it. But Silphy didn't get how something like that may be situated here. Ira told her it was forbidden 300 years ago and it's a really wonderful fact that this thing still works. It's some kind of a barrier that was used to not let gizmas and maybe other monsters enter this territory, but since it was kind of old there might be a chance it would just break one day. And instead of making a barrier, it would accidentally start attracting the monster's attention. Silphy was sure they should take care of this thing. So they needed to understand where they should dig. Ira showed them where they needed to go. The magic sphere stopped moving suddenly. There were a lot of magic waves underground. So Kosuke started digging down. He got there quickly, and after some time he found something interesting. There was a dungeon wall under his feet. He told everyone to come here. That was really interesting. And when Kosuke dug the bricks, they saw a really old dungeon. There was the item they were looking for. A magic sphere that causes those waves. It was a barrier magic thing, and Ira was a bit familiar with it. It looked like a place of court mages. But she felt uncomfortable with those statues. It was obviously golems, those who protect this artifact from strangers. Kosuke was amazed. He had never seen golems before. He was very interested in how their mechanism works. Era told him that every golem has its core inside his body, which allows them to move. And as it should be, golems are invulnerable to any magic or melee attacks. They just have no weak spots. Golems can see them with their eyes as well as other living creatures. Kosuke realized there shouldn't be any problem with them then. First, he got closer to the golems. He had a very nice plan on how to deal with them without a fight. He just locked them with the blocks first. Then he took his pickaxe and started trying to break their armor. After a few hits, it got cracked and he could see the golem's core. Well done. They expected it to be boring as usual. No even epic fight. But it didn't mean it wasn't good. The contrary. They didn't need to put in too much effort most of the time. He just makes their job easier. And well, they got what they wanted. Now they needed to get back outside to build a fort. In the end, it was their main goal for today. Pilna almost died from boredom here while waiting for them. Kosuke did his job quickly and they got their dinner at the end of the day. So good. But Kosuke still had some more work to do in his forge. He was wondering if he had enough materials. In the end tomorrow, he needed to build a huge base for 3,000 people. That's quite a lot. He couldn't wait for it. However, he was a human. And every human has to relax normally. In his situation, he was getting relaxed with Silphy in bed. But in the last days, they both had no time for this at all. It was making him feel stressed. Suddenly, Silphy appeared right from behind. It was so unexpected that he got scared. She was pretty surprised by his excited reaction. He asked her why she didn't sleep. It was pretty late. She straightly told him she wanted this. Well, you understand what she meant. 
Kosuke understood her hint. It seemed that they thought in the same way. Sad that they had no time for it, but she was persistent and wanted to do this right now, right here. She didn't care if someone would watch them. It was going to be a great night. And as it usually happens, there were some night stalkers. Maybe it was some kind of a reality show for them. It's fine if they were enjoying watching it. Well, it would be better to just leave them alone so they walked out to sleep well. After a week of building the fort, Kosuke was dying from fatigue. That was his payment for his superpowers, being exploited by his friends every day. Once he saw Melty's fort plan, he realized it would be better to just drop everything and run away. Well, who said he can run away that easily? He had no choice from the beginning, so she wanted him to make not a simple barracks but houses for families. Would be better to make it bigger, one house should contain four or six families at once. 3,000 people wasn't a joke. Well, they had enough time to build it. Just eight hours of work every day and they would finish it quickly. Melty promised him to make a weekend for him. Even if she was a cruel exploiter, she was honest and never lied to Kosuke. That's true. She never was unfair with him, but, well, it didn't mean she couldn't ask him straightly to do something crazy. And of course, Kosuke wanted to know what kind of reward they were going to give him for his work. Silphie would never leave Kosuke without a reward, isn't it like that? Well, it was pretty obvious that Melty hadn't even planned on giving him any kind of reward. Silphie said they rely on his powers a lot. She said she was ready to do everything he would ask for him. And then Kosuke's dopamine system gave him feedback. Finally, a worthwhile reward. Silphie realized it was a pretty bold promise, and Kosuke knew she couldn't refuse. Of course, she was a great princess of the kingdom. She couldn't refuse from her own words. Not in this life, and not even in the next one. So she just smirked instead of making any excuses. That's gonna be interesting. Then Silphie addressed Melty and asked if she was ready for it. Melty couldn't refuse too, of course, she was her underling. Well, she did that in case Kosuke wanted to gather a harem of girls in bed. Kosuke asked Danan why they both were talking like they were old friends while actually Silphie was a mistress and Melty was her underling. Danan's answer made it pretty clear. They were friends since childhood for real. Melty's mother was raising Silphie so they are more than just old friends, more like close sisters. Kosuke was surprised to hear that, he didn't even guess it could be like that. Danan asked Kosuke to keep being a strong support for Her Majesty. It was really important for her now. But well, it was time to work hard. Melty grabbed Kosuke and they headed to the fields. It's exploiting time. Just no mercy for this poor guy. Danan and Sylphie watched after them walking out. Then Danan told Sylphie his worries about Era. He rarely sees her nowadays. Sylphie told him she was just exploring the dungeon in the desert. It's okay, she wouldn't be Era if she wouldn't do that nerd stuff. Moreover, she loved doing that. She made up a little laboratory there and was doing a lot of research. Then Sylphie attracted everyone's attention. There was important news she wanted to tell the newcomers. It should have been an introduction to their hard-working times. It's gonna be hard, but they must handle it. The people's morale rose up after Her Majesty's speech. And then, two weeks later, they got some results of their hard work. It was a very beautiful city. City that was made in a few weeks, but it wasn't easy at all. However, it was only the first step of their huge plan. Only the beginning of everything. Kosuke unlocked a new skill. Now he could save all the building's drawings. It meant he didn't need to build it anymore. He could just summon the entire building by one click. But he still needed more resources. Anyway, the building speed was above any expectations. Kosuke could build the entire city in a few minutes now. It looked like he was cheating. Maybe he just hacked the Matrix. It was lunchtime. His friends were praising him for his abilities. There's no words to describe how much he did for them. He was glad to help. Kosuke also installed 116 ballistas over the walls. He also needed to set up Mr. Woodspike's traps around the walls. And after that, the bridge. Kosuke also planned to place TNT under the base to blow it up in case they would need to retreat. Sylphie asked Danan about the scout squads. Danan said he was going to make six squads consisting of 12 soldiers. That should be enough for their mission. They already started planning how they would sneakily enter the kingdom. There's a map of it, but it's quite hard to plan their way since their map was old. The relief in some places could change a lot in three years. And now Sylphie had some important things to say. Kosuke did a giant part of his job, so it was time for them to start working hard too. It was a declaration of the start of their expeditions. Everyone was glad to hear that. After a few days at night, a monkey named Saix, an alchemist, was trying to understand what had happened to him today. He was just scared of how someone had jumped at him all of a sudden. He thought someone was about to kill him. Thankfully, it wasn't like that. Just someone had an estrus. It happened so better to be careful. This is Indy from the Blue Demon Clan. He was a former adventurer. Well, no one was glad about the fact the girls were hunting at them like that. Kosuke was wondering how it could be possible in their society. He was surprised it still hadn't happened to him. Well, of course, he was the princess's husband, and it was the only reason he wasn't stalked by other girls. 
Is it good or bad? Well, depends on what he wants from his life. Kosuke was mad. What the hell were they talking about? No, Kosuke, what the hell are you talking about? Kosuke couldn't believe it was possible. He never had gotten so much attention from girls. And those achievements weren't just a bad joke, of course. The only thing he hoped was that they wouldn't try to do something naughty with him. Anyway, he could only continue living, but since now holding it in head. Who could imagine that Silphie was the only reason he was still safe? And anyway, Kosuke was a really important figure here. Even the elders called him a miracle, like Jesus. And besides, Leonardo said they did not have many men. It was a real problem for them. So their main goal was to sneakily free them from slavery and bring them here. Kosuke had a question why they wouldn't just do this with all these mad girls. It was obviously weak since there were too many girls and only a few men. Moreover, Kosuke would have done the same with Ira, Melty, and others. Kosuke agreed with him. Harem is fun, yes, but not in their situation. Leonardo was glad to see Kosuke was thinking cold, but he was sure that every true man must get a harem one day. So, what about Leonardo, actually? Well, he was a man of honor, so his heart was only for his deceased wife. It sounds like a double standard. Leonardo realized he couldn't handle this topic anymore and tried to talk about something else. Of course, everyone noticed that. Kosuke was close to finishing the storage. They had enough food for now, so they were going for the expedition, maybe after two or three days. By the way, Kosuke made food they could take in their expedition. Power bars. He offered to try it out now. It had a taste of nuts and fruits, and it also had a very nice form. You could get pleased by how aesthetic it looks. Someone knocked on the door. It was Ira. She came with a drawing of a magic generator that works on magic stones, but Kosuke wasn't sure if he would be able to save a drawing in his interface. Then Ira took his hand and told him to go. Kosuke felt confused. Then he remembered Leonardo's words. Now it didn't look like a bad joke. It was more real than ever. Kosuke said he would come back soon. Kosuke was getting surprised by how Ira was acting with him. He never saw her doing such strange things. Well, it wasn't bad, maybe. Anyway, it wouldn't spoil their relationships. The next day was the day of the expedition. Finally, the scout squads were going to save their brethren from slavery. It was one of the most important moments in their history. Kosuke wanted to go with them. However, it might be dangerous and moreover, what then was the reason for training soldiers? That's fair. Silphy told Kosuke to do what he was good at the most. She didn't want him to take part in dangerous events like this one. Better to keep him in safety, he was their main person they were relying on. Thanks to his golden hands, they had everything they needed now. With common efforts, they forced Kosuke to stay here. He was going to do his job to not die from boredom. He headed to his forge with Ira. His friends were waiting for him. While Kosuke was working hard, our monkey got a harem of girls. Ira looked like she wanted to join their party too. There was a repeating crossbow made by Kosuke's drawings. He already wanted to test it out. It looked pretty easy to use. He did a test shot. Since you don't need to reload it after every shot, you can shoot faster than usual. The lizard girl tried to seduce Kosuke. However, her horny plan failed. Kosuke was on alert all the time, so no one could do that to him. He got an idea to make this crossbow fully automatic by using Golem. Unfortunately, Aira proved it cannot be possible since the construction is quite small, but it may work with Ballista. The more important thing was how to build a golem and how hard it would be. Aira said it depends on what this golem would be doing. If it's something simple, then it wouldn't be hard. But if he wanted to make a living mechanism that can walk, do jobs, and etc., then it would take a lot of time and resources, so they needed to make a golem core. The alchemist knew the recipe. Kosuke realized he could just make it once, and then he would be able to make it instantly by using his game interface. Ira told Kosuke he's a very interesting person. It looked like she was trying to pick him up with all these compliments. Well, the more important thing was how to simplify Golem's mechanism. They could just use magic to activate the mechanism from a distance. Why not? Sounds nice. It would make their task way easier. Now it was time for work. And then five days later, everything was ready. They were testing out their upgraded version of Ballista. It was working great. So nice. Silphy saw it and praised everyone who was working with Kosuke on this project. Silphy sama told them a compliment. It raised everyone's mood high. Then they saw Pilna coming back with some great news. Jagira's squad was coming back. They saved 37 people. Their squad should arrive after tomorrow. Oh wow, Kosuke got some white clothes. He looks like a doctor. He's actually a doctor. A lot of people needed his help. He had a cure for anything, however, they still were afraid of humans, that's bad. He didn't even do anything bad, so what's the problem? Well anyway, no one could stop their panic now, but there was good news. The scout squads came back with no losses and with some information. They confirmed the fact that the kingdom was on alert now, and their forts including the Omit Desert were under high level protection. And to their surprise, there were some villages that were living their quiet life with no problems.
It also seems that the kingdom needed only mines and shafts with resources. Despite the sad fact they forced civilians to work hard there, they still were giving them enough food and water. But anyway, it was still bad for civilians since they had a lack of rights. Taxes were crazy, and they couldn't even be free in where they go. The punishments were something. They could kill even a child with no mercy. What demons they are. Demons who believed in their god and were forcing others to become part of their religion. The scouts killed everyone there and took villagers away from this hell. Leonardo and others were going to continue their raid by going deeper into the kingdom's lands. Brave soldiers. So for now, that was all the information. Silphy asked them what things would be most helpful for their next expedition. Jagira and Zamir looked at each other. It seems they already had some ideas. Silphy was confused seeing Kosuke ending up in such a strange situation. Kosuke explained there were some problems with civilians. First they were aggressive to him because he's human, but then he healed one of them, and the others became calm and let him do the same. It's really hard to make people trust you. Silphy and others could only feel bad for him. Silphy already had some work for Kosuke. It was time to go to the workshop. The workers were already waiting for him. When they came there, it revealed that their task was about making that type of food you don't need to cook with fire. Besides, they also needed to be in contact with each other from a distance. The better food soldiers eat, the higher their morale is. And having an opportunity to talk with each other from any distance would allow them to work more effectively. But they couldn't even imagine how hard it would be to make it real but they actually could make food for them at the moment. But the problem was in making it hot at any moment and without fire. Maybe using quicklime and water would make it possible, but it won't work if there'll be a lot of food like in their case. Anyway, it's better than nothing for the first time. Now it is better to think about communication problems. Kosuke already had an idea, Morse code. His explanation surprised everyone. There was a magical core in the dungeon. It was sending magic waves. Kosuke had an idea to use it as their main way to send messages. If it would be possible to put their speech on the magic waves, it would be great. Eira was such a genius as always. After a moment of concentration, she told Kosuke her idea. She was going to use the golem's technology as the fundament of their magical device. It's time to work. On the next day, the Brave Scouts went on a road back to the main base. Kosuke and others looked after them until they disappeared on the horizon. They hoped nothing would happen to them on the way, but Kosuke noticed they looked a bit tired and their weight loss was also noticeable. Silphy thought in a positive way. She was sure there was enough food in the main base, so nothing to worry about. Oh wait, there were a lot of men in that soldiers group. It seemed that our monkey bro Sakes would get in trouble soon. Later in the office, after saving Sakes' life from lusty women, they discussed this problem. They had a lack of men and it wasn't good at all. Suddenly, Silphy changed the topic to more private. She was worried if Kosuke was in contact with other women. She didn't see him for a long time. Well, Kosuke didn't lie and said he likes all the women here, but still, Silphy will be his beloved one forever because she's the best. This answer left her with no words and was embarrassed. Nothing to say, he's a genius. But despite being such a strong warrior and leader, she was convinced that she lacked a woman's attractiveness. Kosuke was shocked when he heard such nonsense from her. Well, it was time to show her who's the cute one here. She tried to escape, but it was useless. After a few minutes, she turned into a maid. Pretty nice look. Now it's time to show up to others. Of course she didn't want to, but who actually asked her? Melty was the first one who saw Silphy. Wait, really? It's cool. I mean, Melty was staring at her with some crazy sight. It's gonna turn into something unhealthy. Melty and Kosuke tried to apologize, but she didn't respond. It was bad. They didn't mean to act bad to her, but Silphy still couldn't get rid of this embarrassing feeling. Then Melty showed up with a genius idea. She was going to ask Kosuke to make costumes for everyone, so Silphy won't be feeling that embarrassed. Kosuke liked her plan, but he couldn't get rid of feeling Melty was going to put all the costumes on Silphy instead. Sometime later, civilians gathered near the dressmaker Kosuke to get their new cool costumes. It was a spontaneous event that turned out to be very fun for everyone. I mean, look at Melty and Era, their looks are amazing. But then look at Kosuke, just look at his damn face. I feel the same now. It was a type of work Kosuke may have liked the most, even if it was hard. Aira wanted to get another one since she thought this one didn't fit her. Everyone was glad to change the look. 
see there are some pretty girls in cool costumes. And then again look at Kosuke's face, you got it. Then Melty asked Kosuke to look into the window. Kosuke turned around and saw Silphie's mad and jealous sight. Soon she will come out I swear. Melty tried her best to seduce Kosuke to get some more costumes for herself, but Kosuke was undeterred. Well, he still didn't mind making some more for her. Then, here appeared Aira. In another one costume, by the way, and in the company of five harpies. So nice. Then Melty changed her look too. Looks even better now, isn't it? Kosuke would agree with us. And then the last guest showed up. Sylphie finally came out of her room. He already prepared a ton of clothes for her, so it was time to change again. She realized at that moment that it was such a big mistake. Sylphie tried to argue with Melty, but, well, do you think she had any choice? Kosuke blessed Melty for that. Suddenly, Danan appeared. He was serious as always, so he didn't get what was going on here. Then, Melty and Sylphie finally came out. And, well, okay, this was too much, even for this manga, I guess. Sylphie would agree with me. But who actually asked us? After that messy event, they had to apologize standing in front of Danan. He was really serious and didn't like the fact they were fooling around when it was actually the war days. Suddenly, Era entered the room to tell everyone that Pilna came back with an important report. Sylphie ordered Pilna to report to her what was happening there. It revealed that 1st, 2nd, and 6th squads took control over some shafts in Vinisk. They freed more than 800 people, that's amazing. However, they had a lack of food and water. Obviously, it won't be enough for 800 people. They continued their way to free more lands from the kingdom's control. So, in that case, they will reach their closest base not earlier than in one week. The problem was that they did not have enough time to transport resources to them. So, Sylphie ordered them to begin the work right now. They needed to go to the Marinard Kingdom's territory with Kosuke, and Sylphie didn't like this fact at all. Anyway, they had no other choice. They began working now to finish everything until dawn. Good plan. They went on a road. Sylphie, Five Harpies, and Kosuke. Remind you, he didn't feel any fatigue from running. Then the harpy told Kosuke and Silphi they noticed two gizmas nearby. Kosuke already had an answer to such a situation. It was time to play a shooter game. A few shots easily finished the enemies. Very nice. They almost reached their base. That was pretty quick. At sunset, they reached another base and decided to stop there for now. Kosuke offered them to take some rest, have a dinner, bath, and sleep. Not bad. Kosuke quickly made up a hot bath so the girls could rest here. It was such an amazing feeling to feel the water after running all day under the hot sun. Kosuke decided to make some food. That wasn't a big deal for him. True Minecraft player. After the girls left the bath, Kosuke was about to take a rest there too, but suddenly noticed a feather on the water. Suddenly Pilna yelled at him to drop it somewhere. Kosuke didn't see any problem in that. But then he noticed all the harpies got embarrassed hard. What's going on? Well, for them, it was like someone takes your hair and begins to play with it and sniff it. Pretty uncomfortable scene. He apologized for that, but then the harpy girl acted kind and even would be glad if he would take it. Then all the harpies realized it might be a nice idea and asked Kosuke to take their feathers too. Wow, that's strange. Then Silphy looked at Kosuke with jealous eyes and he realized it's time to stop making jokes with her feelings. For the last time, Kosuke took a feather and looked at everyone's reaction. Hard to believe it causes such expressions on them. Silphy said it was time to go to bed since they have to wake up early tomorrow. Everyone agreed with her, it's sleep time. Kosuke had a pleasant dream. He felt like he was in embrace of thousands of soft and warm feathers. When he opened his eyes, he saw two harpies greeting him. His mood immediately rose up. Kosuke still felt a bit of fatigue after yesterday's work, but at the same time he could say he felt great in his lower body, if you got what I mean. Kosuke greeted everyone. Other harpies were glad to see him too. Silphy immediately ordered him to make breakfast. He noticed she was kind of jealous today. But what was the reason? The harpies also were quite cute today. I mean how they were acting with Kosuke. Silphy told Kosuke to be happy about this fact. Well, he still had a lot of questions in his head. Anyway, this day they had to reach the fifth base by midday. They came here quite fast. Kosuke could even see Marinard lands from this place. Now it was time to build a fort right here. After a few hours, Kosuke did all the work. That was pretty quick for such a large building. No wonder everyone was surprised by such a fast building speed. Kosuke needed to wait three days for the harvest. His abilities were kind of cheat for this fantasy world. But well, it was good. They still had to do a lot of things, but Silphy was still full of energy just like Kosuke and others. Five days later, Kosuke started paying attention to his strange feeling and body. Every time he wakes, he feels his lower body very relaxed and every night he sees the same dream. Very soft and pleasant dream. 
That was very strange. He opened the window and Harpies greeted him as always. Maybe he was close to figuring out what's going on here. He felt really strange and excited while looking at them. It seems that he got in close relationships with these birds. And to confirm this fact, we can see Sylphie almost dying from jealousy and anger. She was trying to pretend that nothing happened, but her feelings were telling the opposite. Kosuke, you have to talk with her, it's not normal. The harpy appeared with a report. The scout squad left the fourth base and headed right here. Kosuke was glad they already prepared everything for them. A warm welcome for brave soldiers. Suddenly, another report from the Harpy. One of the squads was chased by the kingdom's army, and they almost got caught. So they needed help as soon as possible. So it's time to use their new thing, right? Sylphie thanked the Harpy Fitch and the Harpy Ray for the reports. It was time to move fast. Meanwhile, the Kingdom Knights and the Freedom Army engaged in the battle. Leonardo actually wasn't nervous at all, more like it was just annoying to deal with their arrows. However, it was still not a really good situation for them. Leonardo couldn't keep them away for a long time. They just needed someone's help. Suddenly they noticed there was enemy squad attacking them from another side. It's gonna be bad. And to his luck, there appeared help. They looked above and saw the harpies with bombs. Soon, the enemy is gonna explode. Flight, throw, and the enemy exploded. Amazing, right in the target, so it was their first blood. What a horrific power. Kosuke warned the harpies to be careful. Sylphie was sure they knew what they were going to do. The birds were about to begin their mission. Despite Sylphie trying to calm him down, it'll be okay. Kosuke was worrying for their lives anyway. Then Kosuke took the telescope and rushed up the stairs on the walls. It seemed that he was really worried, and even Sylphie's confidence couldn't calm him down. Sylphie noticed it quickly. Kosuke quickly looked into the telescope. It's a real war, and Kosuke knew that well. Everyone could die at any moment. Sylphie suddenly addressed Kosuke. She noticed he was nervous for real. It's because he had never participated in such dangerous events. He's a civilian, after all. But despite this fact he was fighting against monsters like a true warrior, Kosuke didn't actually feel himself as a real warrior since he never killed a human with his own hands. However, Sylphie argued gizmos are living creatures as well as humans, so in that case there was no difference. Maybe she was right. Kosuke agreed with her, but still, it's hard to make so many important decisions in a row for Kosuke. A few weeks ago, he ended up in this world and every day was intense. It was a feeling he never felt before, and well, he wanted to spend some time with Sylphie, it was making him sad. Sylphie suddenly hugged him and said there's no reason to overload yourself that much. She offered him to take rest if he needed to, because just looking at Kosuke who was dying from fatigue wasn't something good. Besides, it was a real war so no one would force him to take part in it. Once she tried to calm him down, and a loud sound of explosion from far away suddenly scared them both. Then Kosuke turned back to Sylphie and told her he already made his choice. He was going to help them no matter what. Kosuke was the one who invented so much military stuff there, and he was giving them a ton of advantage in the war, so how could he leave them alone? No, he's totally not like that. Sylphie was glad to hear such brave words from Kosuke. Now she realized how strong her beloved one was. She thanked him for being so kind. Leonardo's squad was able to escape the knights after the Harpy's bomb attack. Soon there appeared the Freedom Squad. A lot of people came to their fortress. At nighttime, all the civilians already were in a safe place. Kosuke and others were talking a lot about their next plans. Freedom forces were divided by three groups to defend the fortress in case the enemy would appear. Kosuke continued exploring the desert and expanding their base, and that's how four days have passed. And on the fifth day, they arrived at the front fortress. Their civilians met them gladly. Danan already heard from someone how they eliminated the kingdom's army. That was amazing news. The harpies were really happy about their new weapons. Powerful and fun to use. Kosuke told Danan he had finished expanding the base. He did a lot of work and for that, Danan praised him. Thank God they had Kosuke. However, he had no time to rest. Tomorrow, he needed to go back to the fortress. Danan apologized for overloading Kosuke with all this work, but he seemed to be okay with that. Suddenly, Eira appeared and tugged on Kosuke's sleeve. There was something she really wanted to show him. But what would it be? Kosuke got really interested in what surprise they prepared for him. It was in the workshop. When they came there, the workers still had to do some preparations. Saiks couldn't wait for Kosuke's reaction. First, Kosuke didn't even know what to expect. He only hoped it would be really useful stuff. But once Ira and her assistant showed up in backpacks, he was totally disoriented. What is it? A joke? Schoolboy's backpack for real? But then Eira smirked since she saw Kosuke's confusion. She explained everything to him. It's what they needed for communication. 
The phone. Impossible. Morning. The fortress was alive and in full work. Kosuke opened his eyes and immediately realized something was wrong. He looked under the blanket and was shocked. Ira, the hell are you doing here? Wait, what happened yesterday? How did Kosuke end up in such a situation? Then, he remembered, they were talking about the new device. It was supposed to be a phone with long enough range. Ira's brain is something. Kosuke's abilities were strong, but Ira wasn't worse in comparison to him, and they both could create everything from everything. There appeared Lamia with assistance and showed Kosuke the solution for the food problem. It was a portable burner that was working with burnt lime. Amazing. Kosuke had no words to say, and they had a really long conversation that lasted for all night, and that's how he ended up in this room in the workshop. Suddenly, Lamia opened the window to greet Kosuke. However, when she saw this confusing scene, she decided to pretend she hadn't seen anything. Kosuke was totally embarrassed and tried to convince her it's not like that and he can explain. Aira woke up from his screams. Kosuke had a ton of questions for her, but the answer was clear and honest. She just wanted to sleep together with Kosuke. And what else? They didn't do anything bad that night, Kosuke breathed out. But hey, it was so unexpected, she has to at least ask him next time. And for that, Kosuke was going to punish her. Well. She didn't mind, actually. Then he has no answer to this situation. Ira confessed that she always liked Kosuke's strange powers. It was really inspiring to her. The embarrassment meter almost broke in Kosuke's head. Anyway, he had Sylphie already. So what's the point of trying to get in such close relationships with him? Ira said she didn't really want to become a wall between them. But still she wanted him to be his closest one, at least after Sylphie. He couldn't refuse her, it's still embarrassing for Kosuke. This world was surprisingly hard to understand for the one who came from another one. So Kosuke was glad to accept Aira as a friend. But looking into Ira's eye, we can easily guess what she really wants from him. Kosuke realized it too, but he couldn't let it happen that fast. He tried to explain to her how it usually happens in his world, but Ira totally misunderstood what he was talking about. So he decided to let Sylphie talk with Ira instead. It would be better. She looked pleased, maybe because she already imagined how it would be. Well, it's time for breakfast. Kosuke was glad he didn't offend Ira by his words. It seemed he said everything right. Well, another problem was still bothering his mind. How on the earth was he going to talk with Sylphie about that? They had breakfast outside. Wait, the hell is that scene? Pilna was shocked to see Kosuke with Harpies and Era that close. Well, she just said straightly that she was accepted by Kosuke. That's pretty frustrating news for Pilna. And these Harpies were here too. It was good he was getting along with them. But still, Pilna was jealous of that. It seemed she had lost her chance to get closer to Kosuke. So frustrating. Donan came back to ask Kosuke if he was ready to continue working hard. He was glad to accept the offer. However, he would need others' help. And he was going to choose some companions. Pilna. It's your chance. Let's go. She had a thousand reasons to come with Kosuke. They didn't even try to argue with her. So Kosuke will go with the Harpies. And so, he let Pilna choose Harpies to go with them. Ira's sight made Pilna feel confused. The hell? Obviously she won't let anyone get close to Kosuke. It's pretty rough. But she had nothing to answer. First, she needed to talk with Sylphie about that. Kosuke noticed there was a conflict between them both. Oh, that's bad. Or he just misunderstood them. Danan just sighed and let them do whatever they wanted until tomorrow. He was serious as always. Well, it's just about time. Everyone was in a good mood today. They needed to work hard soon. It was time to prepare for the road. They tested the telegraphs. It worked well. It was working even from far away. So nice. So it meant they were ready for everything. They decided to get in contact tomorrow. Kosuke hoped they wouldn't meet any obstacles during the road, and anyways, they still had a plan B for some occurrences. Well, let's see how it will be tomorrow. After that, Eira confessed her feelings to Kosuke, and well, it wasn't the right moment for such words, especially when there were other girls. Total embarrassment. But the girls didn't see to be jealous, though. On the contrary, they knew everyone liked Kosuke. He's something. Other harpies came back, while observing they hadn't noticed anything strange. However, Pilna quickly realized Kosuke was feeling strange for some reason. Well, the Harpies were glad to meet each other. They were the closest ones after all. It's really nice to have a family or friends who love you and always have a warm welcome. It's evening time, which means they were going to prepare dinner. Kosuke made some sandwiches, tasty as always. There were 17 Harpies, and because they were always on observation missions, they rarely were seeing each other. 
Today, thankfully, they all found a chance to spend some time together. Pilna offered everyone to take a bath, Kosuke agreed with her idea, and it seemed that everyone else was glad to accept the offer. The bath party is gonna be hot. Water was really soft and warm. Pleasure. They rarely took baths, so it was something new for them. Pilna suddenly offered Kosuke to take a bath altogether. Wait, it sounds illegal. He wasn't happy with this idea, but who actually asked for his opinion? And that's how Kosuke ended up in another embarrassing situation. This was becoming even more and more dangerous for Kosuke. They were happy to help him wash his back, even if Kosuke didn't ask them for it. No, on the contrary, he didn't want to end up in such a situation at all. But I repeat, who actually asked him? There's no jokes anymore, Kosuke, and unfortunately, Silphie wasn't here, so he won't be saved. But it turned out to be very pleasant, actually. Kosuke came back to the fortress and Sylphie gave him a warm welcome. Thankfully, nothing bad happened to them during the road. Well, she didn't know what harpies did to poor Kosuke, thankfully, and now she went a bit wild and almost broke his bones by hugging. Two lovely hugs. Well, it was nice they finally met. But where's the Freedom Army? Kosuke was about to call them with this new cool device. Wait, what? Well, they didn't know about this thing. Kosuke put the backpack on the table. However, nothing happened. It seems they were too far away and the phone couldn't catch the signal from another one. But still, it was amazing they already made such a thing. It means that they got a very big advantage in the war. Having an opportunity to contact each other during the battle and scout expeditions was kinda cheat in this world. Kosuke already had a ton of ideas on how to use it. Silphie got the same feeling. This item was gold. Thank you, Ira. Suddenly, a report from Harpies. The enemy's army decided to attack them and will reach their fortress in a few hours. Wait, what? Until the sunset, they had to prepare for the battle. 1,000 horsemen, 4,000 infantry. That's way more than their current forces now. Kosuke was worried. What do they have to do now? Then, Silphie said, there's no reason to panic. They have a secret weapon. The fortress was full of bombs. No one would expect that. And because they had a phone. They could detonate the bombs right at the moment the enemy's army would enter the fortress. And then after a big explosion, all the army will be destroyed. The plan was perfect. Well, the only thing is that not all the 5,000 people would be able to enter the fortress. Anyway, they have to make it look like they ran away in a hurry by leaving food and other stuff in storage. Okay, it's time to dig the hole. This place was perfect for observation. Impossible to detect. They took some cookies and fruits from storage. It should be enough. It would be such a nice place to watch the fortress. Looked like a restroom, comfortable, but also with a detonator inside. Just press the button and see what would happen out of the window. All the preparations were done. Then Silphie gave the harpies an order to stay here and do the explosion at the right moment. Kosuke asked them to be careful. Their reaction to his words was especially exciting. Silphie and Kosuke now headed back to the fourth base. Later, Kosuke told Aira about their plan. The telegraph is a really cool thing. She also was worried because she couldn't catch the signal for some time. Kosuke just forgot about the telegraph's max range. Ira asked them to be careful and hung up. After the call, everyone got excited and asked Kosuke to make more of this thing. Everyone wanted to have such a cool device. Leonardo also wanted to ask about something important. When is dinner time? Oh god, was it really that important? Okay, it would be nice to have some food to eat anyway. Silphie asked Kosuke if he felt good. He replied that he was okay. Silphie took the wine and filled two glasses. Kosuke told her how he had spent time with others. Silphie looked happy. It was strange because she already knew about Kosuke's relationships with Ira, but instead, she was calm. It was still embarrassing to talk about such things though. Silphie didn't feel jealous or something like that. On the contrary, she was glad he was getting along with others. Kosuke anyway told her what he was thinking about. Despite the fact he was with other girls last week, he still loved Silphie the most and never had a feeling to cheat on her or forget about her. Moreover, if Silphie would end up in the same situation, he would die from jealousy. Silphie just saw it cute. Not bad, Kosuke. You have to get more wafus in your harem. It seems that Silphie wouldn't mind, actually. She began to get closer and closer to Kosuke's face, and it made him feel embarrassed. No matter how much time they had spent together, he still couldn't stop feeling like that every time. Oh, and what about Aira? Silphie would be glad to spend time with them both if you got what I mean. However, their cute talks were interrupted by a loud sound. Something happened. It was an explosion. The fortress blew up with all the kingdom's army. Nice job, my lads. I am proud of you. Kosuke and Silphie realized what happened only after a minute or two. That was really unexpected. 
but how it actually was from the Harpies' view. Once they noticed the army surrounding the fortress, they immediately got on full alert. Then, the army began to enter the fortress. First they were careful, but after the command from the army leader, all the soldiers began to enter and soon all the rats were in the trap. The harpies couldn't believe they have to kill so many people by just pressing a button. And when the last soldier entered the fortress, the harpy pressed the button. And then you know what happened next. Kosuke and Silphie had no words to say. The power of the explosion was way above his expectations. Leonardo and others were also worried of what's going on. No wonder that everyone woke up after that. The Oni couldn't wait for their attack, but unfortunately they had to go back to third base, and then they have to wait for the Harpies report there. And also, they obviously needed more soldiers to conquer the kingdom. Anyway, the explosion looked really powerful. No one wondered if all the knights died there. Kosuke got an idea. He opened the achievements window and hoped there was a bonus for killing people. First, he noticed another funny achievement the lover damn it it's not what he wanted to see and yes he finally found it now there were no doubts if they killed all the army Kosuke got an achievement for killing more than 3,000 people Silphie noticed Kosuke's surprise expression he told her he saw an achievement well she didn't know what he was talking about so he was going to explain everything to her too much information stop it please no one got what he meant by that ton of words on the contrary, it caused even more questions to Kosuke. Better to forget what he said. He decided to explain it like God was helping him and that's it. So Kosuke could do something and get something for that. Pretty easy to understand now. Besides, he could level up his abilities or gain new ones. That was strange, so everyone was excited. It seemed that they believed in God's theory. Better than nothing. On the next day on third base, Pilna met with Kosuke and others. She was still excited and amazed by that powerful explosion they made. The picture still stood clear in her mind. After the bomb detonation, the Harpies got an order to what to do next. They had to check the territory around to see if someone was still alive. And as they expected, the explosion power was strong enough to kill everyone. Only 20% of soldiers were alive and could stand on their feet. But Pilna also added that even those 20% were done after midnight. Gizmas had no mercy for any of them. Poor soldiers tried to do something, but it was useless. Being less than in half from their strength, the knights became the food for the dangerous beasts. Leonardo was proud of Kosuke's genius mind, so they destroyed the enemy's forces. Now they didn't need to care about them for a while until the kingdom's army would regroup. Aira made a call and asked if the information was correct. Kosuke confirmed the elimination of the kingdom's army and success of their mission. Aira was worried for Kosuke if he could feel bad for killing so many humans, but to her surprise he was actually fine and on the contrary happy. Aira was happy too, she would take care of him later and for now, she hung up. Sylphie looked at Kosuke with contempt. Was he going to have a good time with Aira upon arrival? He had no reason to lie anymore. Of course he was dreaming of it, not gonna lie, it would be a really nice time. But Sylphie imagined something different. Silphie asked Kosuke if he wanted her to do some pleasant stuff, and he obviously and gladly accepted her offer. But what happened next caused a total confusion on Silphie's face. Da hell are you doing, Kosuke? Well, if you feel good, then I can understand you. She actually was fine with it too. That's how they spend their night together. However, on the next day, Leonardo and others told Kosuke to be more gentle next time with Silphie's feelings. Kosuke didn't get what they meant. And should I say their night game was a bit different this time? It was a day outside, but for some reason, Sylphie didn't want to come out. She locked in her room and cried about what happened that night. That's why Kosuke couldn't tell them the truth. And the truth was so terrible, no one could imagine what it could be. And as you can guess, Sylphie was taking the initiative in such things again. Once she tried to lie on Kosuke's knees, she couldn't stop being his personal cat. It was the cutest scene in this manga, and thankfully, I can finally show it. Pleasure for your eyes. Then Sylphie finally left her room. Everyone immediately surrounded her with tons of questions. It seemed they cared a lot about Her Majesty, and thankfully, she was actually fine. Kosuke decided to demolish their mini-base. During the process, Kosuke noticed everyone was talking to Sylphie. No, please don't tell them what happened that night. After the deconstruction, the Harpies came to Kosuke with the report again. They reported that Sylphie was actually fine, and now they knew there was no Kosuke's fault. That's cruel. Stop it, damn. Too embarrassing. And no wonder Sylphie finally blew up because of this mess. She couldn't hold back anymore, and was going to release her inner power to destroy everyone. There are no jokes anymore, my friends. It's time to run. Run for your damn life as fast as possible. 
but this incident actually helped them to catch up with others. Aira welcomed Kosuke upon his arrival. The workshop was fully in the hard work process as expected. It's time to take a little break and have some tea. Wait, where's Saix? It seemed he got a bit ill. Well, better to not think about what actually happened. During the tea party, Kosuke explained that the telegraph was kind of hard to use. He has to use magic power if he wants to activate it, but Kosuke couldn't use magic. The telegraph needs something like a magic battery. The engineers were glad to reconstruct it a bit, and they didn't even need to struggle with it. Pretty easy to do that quickly. Kosuke felt himself stupid in their company. Two smart heads around there. Now they were working on another cool thing. The Magic Waves Transponders. As you might notice, some things in this world were working with magic energy. Magic is the core of engineering in this world, just like the electricity in ours. Lamia showed him an example of a magic item, this gun. They took an idea from Kosuke's gun and made their own one based on magic energy. Sadly, it had some problems with durability, but still, what an amazing job. Kosuke praised them. Aira also told him about magic swords and magic spheres. Yes, they made it too, so their forces will become stronger with these new weapons. Kosuke also wasn't just fooling around. He had an idea to make a miso soup and a soy sauce. No one had any idea what he meant by that, and Kosuke also had no idea why he couldn't make it even with all the ingredients in the inventory. When the engineers saw what he was doing, they were amazed. And even if Kosuke couldn't make these foods, he was able to make other ones. Soy milk and soy flour, it's a pretty nutritious product, and it also looked tasty. Anyway, Kosuke was thinking about soy sauce and miso soup. There must be a reason why he couldn't make it. And then he realized what was wrong. He needed to try out a barrel instead of a workbench. He needed a few more items to finish it. Kosuke was happy. Two barrels were done quickly, 200 grams of beans, and it would be enough to fill, uh, the 20 kilograms barrel. This world is totally strange. Ira was curious about the process of making it. Kosuke was glad to share some information. Fermentation is the key. Oh wait, fermentation is also used in making sake. Interesting idea. Imagine their idea worked. They got sake. Now it's time to make some miso soup. But before that, they decided to transport the barrels to the central square. Good idea to free more space in the workshop. It was the middle of the day. Their work was in full swing. Kosuke was the one who could create drinks in just a few minutes. And then they got more sake. Sake for everyone. Kosuke didn't expect it to turn into a feast, but it seemed to be another cool event to discharge the heavy atmosphere of the war. Everyone got at least one mug of sake. Everyone's gonna be drunk today. Thank you, Kosuke. It was really tasty. All the civilians liked its taste. Then, Sylphie and Leo appeared there. They had no words to say. Kosuke explained to them what's going on, and, well, it still was confusing. And to make it less confusing, they just decided to take part in this feast. It was a really cool ale. Sylphie didn't expect it to be that good. Leo praised Kosuke. Other drinks in comparison to Kosuke's one could be called a horse's urine. No more, no less. Well, rough, but honest. Oni, Gerda, and others came here to join their drunken party. Let's go. Sylphie also liked this idea. Everyone took toast for Her Majesty. While others were drinking ale normally, Oni were wild and were drinking from barrels instead. They all hadn't drunk ale for a really long time, especially such a good ale. Look at the birds. It's another time they all met each other. Sylphie already got drunk. Kosuke was the only person who hadn't drunk a single drop. Ira couldn't believe her eye. The fermentation process was really fast and the same in every barrel. That's Kosuke's magic. And because Kosuke was the only one who hadn't drunk ale, he couldn't get into the party. Suddenly, there appeared another sober person. Danan. He couldn't understand what was going on there, but then he saw Sylphie drunk and got even more confused. Sylphie and Kosuke offered Danan to drink some ale. It's okay to be drunk today. And he didn't mind, actually. One mug of ale then, another one. Danan liked it a lot, I guess. That's how their evening had passed. The atmosphere of joy filled their hearts. Should I even tell you how they felt on the next day? While Sylphie was sleeping sweetly, Kosuke was already working on something. It was a dagger he made for himself. He called it Tsurugi. Kosuke was so focused on his work, he didn't notice Era appeared there unexpectedly. She came here to talk with Sylphie, but well, she was dreaming now. And while she was dreaming, Ira had the opportunity to steal Kosuke. He almost forgot about what they wanted to do. Lying on Ira's thighs was his favorite thing in spending time with her, and she enjoyed it maybe even more than Kosuke. He almost fell asleep from this soft and warm feeling. 
However, Silphy woke up not in the best moment. She noticed Kosuke was looking kinda tense. Of course you caught him cheating on you. Well, if it could be called that. She looked into his eyes seriously and sat in front of him. After a few minutes, he ended up in a really strange situation. He had no idea what would happen next. Silphy began to talk. It was time to finally solve this problem with Kosuke. Aira and Silphy were going to split Kosuke between them both. Wait what? Is it gonna be like I just imagined? Kosuke was afraid by their words. Silphy wanted to sleep with Kosuke and let him spend time with Aira on the day. But Aira also wanted to sleep together. Well, they could do it one by one. Then they turned their heads to Kosuke and were waiting for his answer. And it didn't look like he had any choice. He just asked them to act friendly with each other, just like sisters. Silphy and Aira liked his idea. Things were taking a more serious turn. They both got rid of their clothes. Kosuke couldn't even realize what was happening, but just by looking at them, he could say that nothing good would happen now. And he was right. Or wrong. Depends on how much pleasure or pain he would get from it. Later, Kosuke and the girls entered the conference room. Well, Aira pretended to be tired, so Kosuke was carrying her. Kosuke apologized for being too late. Anyway, it's time to discuss some important things. Danan offered to change their main plan. This news was shocking for everyone. Before they were pretty defensive, so now after they got enough weapons and forces, Danan came with an idea to become more aggressive and attack the enemy's forts. The atmosphere in the conference room was filled with excitement. Because the kingdom's army had lost thousands of soldiers, they had not much power in the Omit Desert. So it means there's no reason to stay defensive anymore. It's time for a counterattack. Everyone was listening in full attention. Kosuke got Danan's logic. First they couldn't attack, but now there's an opportunity to take control over all the territory. First there were only 300 people, now there are 5 times more. It was also possible to count the enemy's forces. There were around 6,500 soldiers, now they lost 5,500. It means they had only 200 or 400 soldiers in one fortress, but it still won't be easy though. And thankfully, they had Kosuke's weapons. With bombs and crossbows, they had all the chances. But it meant that they needed Kosuke on the front line. Silphy wasn't happy with this idea, of course. Her evil aura filled all the room. But Danin was persistent. He took all the risks and convinced Silphy it's a really important step in their mission. Everyone agreed with Danin. Kosuke amazed by Danin's strong nature. He was talking calm and confidently while looking at evil Silphy. Leonardo also supported Danin. Silphy had no arguments against it, she could only agree. Kosuke also was ready for that. Ira just realized that the enemy had no answer to the situation now. They had no powerful magic or something that could suddenly destroy their plans. Aira agreed with the idea of counterattacking. Besides, they had way stronger weapons than the enemy. Silphy then told Dane and she wanted to go on the front line with Kosuke too. It was dangerous, but it will be more dangerous to send Kosuke alone there. In this case, they can protect each other's backs. And anyway, Silphy was one of the strongest warriors here, so there shouldn't be any problem. Danan apologized for being arrogant and acknowledged the princess's choice, so the counterattack plan was accepted by everyone, and for the next four days, they were preparing for it. Food, clothes, and weapons. Kosuke wanted to do his best, and for that he needed to sleep well. Kosuke entered the room and was met by the harpies there. Well, he didn't know they would be there. But what were they doing actually? Kosuke asked them straightly and got a straight answer. Silphy wanted to spend some time with him and that's it. She just felt like death might catch them one day and what day it would be no one knows, especially during the war. Despite the harpies having such a positive mood, Kosuke felt the tense atmosphere. Anyway, Silphy wanted him to have a good time. They also revealed the fact that they were training hard all this time while Kosuke was sleeping. Wait. That's illegal. Kosuke didn't know he was that kind of a toy for them. Aira also was here. She almost finished cooking dinner. It's time to eat. First he didn't get what it was, but it looked tasty anyway. Kosuke really liked it. The next day they gathered on the square to meet the forces from the main fort. Melty was in a very good mood. She also noticed Kosuke got along with all the girls. She wanted to join his harem too. But well, other girls were jealous and aggressive, but was it an actual problem for their relationships? Well, yes, Kosuke would be glad to have a choice in this world. Anyway, there's no time for fooling around. They had to go prepare for tomorrow. After that, they bid farewell and went outside to build a new fortress. Kosuke made it in a few hours as always. What a horrific power. Kosuke built it right in front of the enemy's fortress. 
It was their plan on conquering the enemy's territories. At nighttime, all the preparations were almost done. They planned to start in the morning. Then Kubi appeared to say they were ready. Danan got it and wished them luck. Nice job. All the forces surrounded the enemy's fortress. They planned their attack very well, so there shouldn't be any problem. Silphy looked at Kosuke and asked if he felt alright. Kosuke was actually calm to his own surprise. And then finally, the dawn. A perfect time to attack the enemy. Silphy drew her blade and everyone else too. Then finally, she gave a sign. Attack the enemy. Thanks for watching the video. Long time no see with this cool manga, I guess. We will wait for more chapters to make you feel happy for another time. And as always, I want to ask you to write a word in your comment. This one. The more comments I see, the more motivation I get for making more cool recaps for you. And also, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you still didn't. See you later, my friends.